Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and uh, let us have a good discussion today about what people think or they call him a prophet. His name is Muhammad, which is not even really his name. You know, when you say Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, okay, can you show me a prophecy of a Prophet Muhammad so we can call him a prophet? So this is a very simple episode. My Skype is open, and we invite Muslims to call us. Actually, we have the guy who, uh, last time he called me, uh, uh, you know, he is, he just, he texted me, I don't know if you want to call. Let us see. What is the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad? I mean, Prophet Muhammad, but he have no prophecy. Uh, you know, like, look like I'm a prophet too. Because I have no prophecy. Let us see. We will take the first one in the list. If you are a Muslim, feel free to call me. It doesn't matter how big you are, by the way. The bigger is better. Oh, this guy, look, his internet is not working, maybe. It's not connecting. Yes, yeah, like trying to log in, but it looks like his internet is not doing good. If you are a Muslim, and you ever heard that Muhammad, he have a prophecy. Can you please share it with us? Because it's very embarrassing that we have, you know, hundreds of millions of people call a man prophet, but yet he have no prophecy. So where, where he got his title from? Is that something we can purchase from eBay? Is that something anyone can claim? Is it something, you know, just talk is cheap. Anyone can say he's a prophet. Any Mohammedan, my Skype is open. You can contact me. You can text me first if you want, and I will call you. Just to avoid many calls at the same time. Okay, let us see here. We have Muhammad. Just uh, him. All right, let's see if we can get a Muslim to call us. Somebody saying why you don't put the money sign to donate. Um, you know, YouTube, they, you know, they always fight me, so it's not active because of YouTube. However, if you want, you can go to uh, Patreon and people can donate if this is what you're asking about it's very easy and actually in better yon is better because in youtube they uh, they take most of the don uh, donation to their pocket you know any muslim would like to call us i mean look how simple the question is and how simple the challenge i mean they have tons of videos prophet muhammad prophet muhammad you know i mean you, when you see those videos science and the quran blah 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 all of this is a fraud not a single one of them is true and here we go we are live on air saying who is a muslim want to call us you know you will not find the muslims there to do that by the way they were not there I remember, you know, once I called the Dean Show. You can you can find actually the the, the in YouTube. Uh, call us, call us if you have a question. So I said, okay, let me call them. You know, I called them. They did not even let me go through because there is no live call. It's a lie. You see this guy. His name is Yusuf State. He have a cell phone in his hand. Uh huh. Uh, we have a call. Okay, uh, it's uh, calling the cell phone. I mean, this is a TV program, and you are calling supposedly someone else. What, what, what do you mean they're calling the cell phone? And then he put the phone next to his ear. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Uh-huh. Ah, you have a question. Uh, okay. 
Uh, you are a Christian. Uh, uh, okay, okay, but no, we hear no voice. We hear nobody talking. So they fabricate questions, and those questions are made previously before the program. They cannot take uh, a real question from a real person. Here we are real. Who is the real Muslim? Want to call the real Christian prince? Anyone? Muhammad, he predicted, will fight against the Roman. Actually, uh, you know, Muhammad will fight, the Muslims will fight against the Roman. Muhammad, he predicted that the Arab of, of Mecca, they are the one who will open Constantinia. But the one who did that is the Turkish. And Muhammad, he says, avoid fighting the Turkish as long as they avoid you. <laughs> so where is that? The one who will open Constantinia, it was the Arab of Mecca. Not a single Turkish between them. Right? Uh, any Muslim? Just to bring anything you want. I mean, if you're a Muslim, just, uh, you know, call me and show me the prophecy. And don't worry, I mean, we are laughing at it anyway. Because not because we want to laugh, but because it's, it's it's a fraud, it's a lie. Actually, the same ones they call them prophecy is the same one proved to us that Muhammad is a fraud. Try me. Who is a Muslim? Want to give me? You see, I'm giving you a freedom to choose whatever you wish. Anything. Any prophecy. Name one. Right? Anyone? If you are uh, like shy to call, you can text. No problem. In, in the in the chat, you can post your. Especially if you are a Muslim. Anyone? Because if you if you Muslims don't call, then we have to go to Muslim website where they are posting list of a prophecy or what they call prophecy, and then we will love together. So what do you think, Muslims? Let me try to call this guy again. I don't know, like the sign in YouTube in Skype, it says he is online, but when I call him, it doesn't hook up to. So you'd give this uh, sound that's mean there's no connection. Anyone? There's no way there's no, no Muslims are listening. You know, we just started, we have almost 700 people watching, and there's no Muslims here? That seems impossible. Right? Who is a Muslim when to tell us why you think Muhammad is a prophet? What is a prophecy? And don't worry, you know, we will have a nice conversation. We are not here to fight. We are here to discuss. If you are right, you are right. I mean, nobody can make you wrong. You know, always the truth will reveal itself. No matter what people try, you know, if somebody trying to bully someone, like they say bully, you know, a bully will not hide the truth. You can, you can do bully. Like Mimi, uh, when he was in the stage with uh, David Wood, he tried to bully David Wood in order to cover the truth. But later, everybody is laughing at him, you know. You cannot cover the truth by bullying, you know, by, by using the the the, uh, the strategy of bully. If you want to be bully, no problem. Anyone? Okay, look like there's no Muslims. Would like to share with us any of the prophecy of the the self-proclaimed prophet. Let us go to Muslim website and see some prophecies. All right. I just search in Google. I mean, I don't know, like uh, there's many websites, but the first one that came in my way, uh, I found this one. The prophecies of a prophet Muhammad, the proof of a prophethood series. Okay. Hmm. Let us see the prophecies as long as Muslims are not willing to call us. Let us see. The prophecy of the messenger. 
the prophecies of the messenger let me make the text more clear for you guys so you can read it better okay see uh, between two brackets Muhammad I do not tell you that I have the this portrait that the treasure uh, containing the provision of Allah nor that I know the unseen nor do I tell you uh, that I am an angel I only follow what Allah revealed to me that's a wonderful thing Muhammad he just confirmed he have nothing to do with the future he cannot tell you the unseen he do not know what the treasure Allah he have and he just tell you what uh, Allah told him so how come in the Quran it says that Jesus he tell you the unseen you know, remember the Muslim, they say that Muhammad is the greatest prophet. So how he is not the, the greatest prophet, but he is not given to tell you the unseen. Jesus can tell you what you hide in your houses. Jesus can tell you what you are thinking about. And we're talking about Quran, we're not talking about the Bible now. Jesus can resurrect people from death. Jesus can give eyes to the blind. So when Muhammad, he makes us such, such a confession, is showing that he is this evil because they were asking him questions and he have no idea what to say so look at this uh, this madness the, the 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 article is supposed to prove to us that muhammad is a special you see the prophecies of prophet muhammad and then less than a minute after it says that the Muhammad, prophet muhammad he don't know anything i only follow what is revealed to me and then what the Muslims they do, they don't show us a Quran because what is revealed to Muhammad is Quran. So they try to say to us the prophecy of Muhammad is in the Hadith, but this will be against the Quran. Because you just said, Quran saying, I only follow what is revealed to me. So what is revealed, revealed from what? From Allah. How Allah spoke to Muhammad by Quran, unless you Muslims agree that Quran and Hadith is the same. And that will change the game so we can play more. Do we have any Muslim have a comment about what we just say? It's like, you know, Muhammad here is signing disclaimer, says, you know, don't ask me questions. I am an ignorant person. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I know nothing. This is what this, is what this verse is about. And the funny, this verse is mentioned in the chapter of the animals, Al-An'am. Isn't, isn't it that funny? Al-An'am. The animals, this is, this is what animals they can say to us. I know nothing. I eat only grass. Don't ask me. I know nothing about God. This is what the verse is saying. I know nothing about his treasure. I know nothing about him. I know only what he tell me. Okay, who? What is the proof not he tell you anything if you know nothing? And then you ask the Muslims, Muhammad received revelation from who? say from Allah did he see Allah no did he speak to Allah no so he received revelation from who there's a guy he appeared to him in the cave he squeezed him three times okay maybe the guy is uh, you know strange crazy guy I mean why why even he want to squeeze him three times and after he squeezed him what happened did Muhammad change and why he squeezed him three times to the point he cannot breathe And then Muhammad, he says uh, to, to him, I cannot read, and the guy keeps squeezing him. What does that mean? I mean, are you stupid? The guy, he just told you, I do not know how to read. You keep saying to him, read, and read what? Did you give him a paper? Because in Arabic, when you say, qara, iqra, you know, this is an Aramaic word, you know, from qara wa ra'a. Qara is saying things by the lips. Ra'a is seeing something by the eyes. So you, your lips say what you saw by your eyes, reading. I remember once Muslims they made uh, videos like they gather like a bunch of them to refute me supposedly and uh, uh, they said uh, uh, the word Qara'a does not mean read I said okay let us go with this theory you see that the problem that you know uh, they don't I don't know I mean they're very shallow uh, let's see how they try to solve this problem 
that he is saying to him read and the Muhammad saying to the uh, support to Jibreel I can't read so they come with a solution you know that the Muslim they come with solution not because they are convinced with it but it is just to refute you know we need to refute this guy so we need to say anything anything here we see the story of Muhammad going supposedly the cave and then a guy he came to him and supposedly this is an angel you see the angel is not coming with wings or anything you know it's uh, you know even even Muhammad he did not describe that uh, in this here he told him that there's a person he came and he squeezed me so here it says the angel came to him and asked him to read okay read even your Muslim translation says read so the Muslims to save themselves from the embarrassment of the story the stupidity of it they say oh he did not say read he said recite that's wonderful if you say that he say recite and then Muhammad he says I cannot recite that is the most stupid statement ever because he just told you recite and you recited because recite is repeating what you heard before you know what I mean it's like saying eat and I eat and then I say to you I cannot eat do you see the embarrassment let us see do we have a, guys if you don't if you're not a Muslim don't uh, please uh, call me or we need Muslims only for now if you are not a Muslim don't call me not now Tomorrow we take calls from Christians in the other account. By the way, tomorrow we will be in the quality of life account. So if you want to join us, there's a link down in the info. It says live on quality of life Sunday. And there is a link you can click and you can subscribe. So you will be notified when we go live on air. And there the topics always have nothing to do with Muhammad and his stories. So you know a christian prince he recited well, recite that's mean well, muhammad is a fraud because when you say to a person recite that's mean he already knew what he will repeat recite is you saying something from your memory and it's very silly actually let us say okay i will give you a solution maybe he says repeat after me okay how you say to him i cannot repeat you just did he just said to you one word Iqra. If it's mean recite, you say to him, I cannot recite, you just did. So the story from the beginning is very silly, very stupid. It's not even good for a six years old kid. It's not convincing. And you know, these, these I mean, like, there's uh, kids are amazing. And I remember once I was talking to a little girl. So, you know, I was speaking to her in her age. She's like uh, six or uh, five years old. I said, Do you see this broom? This is the one they fly with it. She said, ah, you think I'm stupid? This is only in the cartoon. I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, she's like very, very, very small. I mean, she said, do you think I'm stupid? This is only in the cartoon. Sadly, there's a billion human being and more. They believe in the cartoons of Muhammad. This is cartoon. This is can happen only in the cartoon. A prophet of God, you know, he should not tell a story which is embarrassing. This guy keep texting me, calling me. Are you a Muslim? His name is not. So we keep saying, don't call me if you are not a Muslim, and we keep receiving text and messages. Any Muslim have anything to say? So from the start, the story of Muhammad does not make sense. It is silly. There is no intelligence in the story. And the guy he is squeezing Muhammad. Okay, what's the difference between Muhammad before he squeezed, being squeezed, and after being squeezed? Nothing. But Muhammad even did not understand what's happening. So what's the point of this?
And what make it more funny, the angel, when he say to him, read, this is the word of Allah. It's not the angel, the angel is just delivery person, supposedly. So how Allah, he say to Muhammad, read, and Muhammad, he is not able to read. If you don't understand what I'm saying, Jesus says to the blind man, see, he saw. So he said to the guy who cannot walk, walk, he walk. Right? Okay. Allah said to Muhammad, read, Muhammad still cannot read. Isn't it the Muslim they say if Allah wants something to happen, he say B is going to be? Here we go, he said to Muhammad, read. Muhammad still cannot read. Like once I wanted to be a prophet like Muhammad, so uh, a Bedouin he came to me, this is a story Muhammad he mentioned by the way, a Bedouin came to him and he's, uh, Muhammad he told him, why you don't convert to Islam? The Bedouin guy, he have a lizard, big lizard, the lizard, lizard, uh, you know, in his, uh, in his like, case. Uh, so the, the Bedouin, he said to Muhammad, if this lizard convert, I will convert. If this, if this uh, lizard say Shahada, I will say Shahada. And then the lizard came back to life, brother. And he said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah in Arabic, hmm? the lizard. And then the Bedouin, he converted to Islam. Oh. Who, was, who in the world want to believe in such a stupid story? And why this story is not in the Quran? You know, how come in the Quran we have all kind of stories, including the most silly ones, like the Suleiman and the ant? Suleiman, he heard the ant. Which one is more important? Muhammad making the lizard convert to Islam, saying Shahada, or the ant saying to the ant? How come this is not in the Quran? Obviously, those things are created long after Muhammad. Those stories. Otherwise, this would be like a, a major thing in the Quran. Actually, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad had no miracles. You know, the Quran confirmed with no doubt that Muhammad has zero miracle. Allah refrained from sending miracles. If we go in the Quran, it says, nothing refrain us from sending miracle in chapter 17, verse number 59. As you see, Allah, he confirms, suppose the Akka Muhammad, because they keep asking him, where is the miracles? Where do you have miracles? All prophets have miracles. Where is your, yours? So he said, and we refrain from sending signs only because the men of former generations treated them as false, which is stupid to say, because the Jews believe in all prophets of the Jews. And the Christian believe in both the Jewish prophets and the Messiah and the disciples of the Messiah because they commit they did miracle too. So it's a false stupid excuse for those generations they believe in the miracles and Muhammad is showing a clear sign that he have no miracles for he is a fraud. Do we have any Muslim that tell us a, pro a prophecy of the prophet? Until now we are you know waiting. Anyone? Guys, invite your friends. We have only less than 900 yet. That means you are not inviting your friends. At the end of the program, we will give you a flying carpet which can carry the kingdom of Suleiman. Huh. The whole kingdom of Suleiman in a flying carpet? Don't you think this is too much exaggeration, Muhammad? All 600,000 chairs. And then all his animals, and all his war equipment, and all the food, the kitchens, the cooks, They're, the whole kingdom is flying. This is like, a, a, this is not even in the cartoon of Alibaba. By the way, to be honest with you, my grandfather, he used to have a flying carpet like this. My father, he got, because you know, when my grandfather, he died, they divide the flying carpet between his kids, and he have like, 200 kids you know so my my father he got a small portion of it i used to take it when my dad is asleep and i fly like i go to japan you know in the morning and then i go to starbucks in hulunulu no passport now it's a true story i mean who need witnesses my brother do you take a camera selfie uh, brother 
Prophet Muhammad, do you have a selfie at that time? I am the same. Hello, how come you believe in his stories? Hmm? What, 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 is, what, what is, where is any evidence about this guy to be a prophet? Who want to help us? Anyone? Any Muhammadan? Is allowed for Muhammadan to reject fatwa? Well, Muhammadan, they can reject anything. Anything is embarrassing, they reject it. This is the game, it's a game, you know? When you go, uh, uh, when you go like, uh, oh, this is embarrassing. So what I would do, I say, I reject it. Even inside you, you, you know, it's true, you know, so. Where is the prophecy of the prophet? Okay, let's go back to the article. As long as no Muslims are willing to show us prophecy of the prophet who have no prophecy. Okay. Uh, the prophecies of the messenger. All right, number one. The Byzantine will be rebound. You know, I mean, this prophecy is so stupid to the point Muhammad, he said that after the, the Roman, he, they became victorious. You know that? Let us go to the Hadith. Let us see if we can. Oh boy. Look at this prophecy, guys. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid prophecy like this? I heard that Trump, he won. And after he won, I said, Trump, he will win. Read the hadith. And this is Sahih. Abu Sa'id narrated, Abu Sa'id narrated, on the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. So the believers were pleased with that. Then the following was revealed. Alif Lam Mim, the Roman being defeated, and then they will be victorious. <laughs> Look at this madness. Oh boy. If we ask Zakir Naik, you know, about this situation, I'm sure Zakir Naik, he have a solution for that. Very sad, nice solution, you know? I don't know, I, I lost uh, the phone number of Zakir Naik. Do we have any Muslim? Hey guys, anyone wanna text me or, or call me, you have to be a Muslim to call. Why people don't listen? Why people don't listen? Muslims, Muslims only. Do I have to tell you one by one in text in Skype? Only Muslims can call? So, if we call Zakir Naik and we ask him about the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, for sure, Zakir Naik, he is all knowledgeable, you know. I'm calling his cell phone. Hello? Christian Prince, I told you, don't call me. How you know it's me, man? You can see my phone number. First of all, even if you bring your phone number, I can see it. I can feel it. Trust me, I can feel it. Zakir Naik, you must be a prophet. How you know it's me? It's unbelievable. Christian Prince, first of all, I told you one at a time. Don't call me when I am in the middle of the night. 
Because this is a very sensitive time. Okay, Zach and Mike, I don't know. It's uh, it's middle of the night for you. You are right. It's very uh, late now. Uh, sorry for, I apologize for waking you. We can go back to sleep. No problem. It's okay. Please your breath. You can't run away from me. I am a curse of Allah on you. I trained you. Okay, okay. No problem. The prophet, he have a prophecy about the Roman. Is that true? Exactly. And uh, But he mentioned the prophecy after the Roman became victorious. So how that make it a prophecy? There is something it called go flat back. Go what? Flat back. Uh, what does that mean? If you watch a movie, you will see in the movie they start from the end. And then they go to the front. Ah, like they start from the end of the movie, they show you like a scene. Exactly. And you are ignorant. So here, Allah, he go in the ending, you know, in the, in like in the end, and then he go back. Ah, okay, so the prophet, he was given a prophecy about the Roman will win after they won because he was using cinema tactique on Hollywood. Chris and Brith, now you are getting smarter. And now I respect you. Finally, you are thinking and you are using your brain. Uh, but uh, hold on. But how this is can be called a prophecy then if, the, if he said that after what happened, happened. First of all, we can call it prophecy because at that moment nobody knows that they are victorious. But it says here that all the Arab there, they are the new. And the believer rejoice when they hear the news. So even the believers heard the news before Muhammad. Exactly. But the truth is that the Prophet is the only one Allah he revealed for him the truth. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter who knows about it before Muhammad. But Allah told Muhammad that the Roman would be victorious. And this is after they became victorious. And this is make it a prophecy. Exactly. Because at that moment, nobody knew. What do you mean nobody knows? Everybody knows that they were victorious, including the Roman. You are stupid and you know it. I'm telling you, at that moment, nobody knows except the Prophet. They knew that the Roman the victim Victoria, this is true. Everybody knows. And even the news came very late for the Prophet. But this is, does not say anything. This is a prophecy. Uh, uh, Zakir Naik. So if I make a prophecy right now, saying Zakir Naik, <clears throat> he live in Malaysia. Uh, but you post videos already saying that you are there. And you make... Uh, live uh, broadcast from there so everybody knows that you are there so how how this will be a prophecy i'm prophesying that you will go there but you are there for the last four years how that can be a prophecy christian prince in your case a different story because first of all i am not in malaysia i am in malaysia country not in the map not in the name you are different when you speak you are not even i can't i can't take you serious you have to say the word country Otherwise, people, they will take you wrong. They will think that uh, Malaysia is like a box or something. You have to say in the country of Malaysia. And yes, I am there. And if you say that, that I am there, you are lying. Because simply, you, everybody knows there. You, are, you know, this is not a, a big deal. So the prophet, he did the same. He just mentioned that the Roman would be victorious after they became victorious. So how this became surprise prophecy? Christian Prince, first of all, in the old days, we used to take Hathis. What? People, they used to take hashish. What do you mean? Drug, drug. Uh, smoke, like, you know, marijuana, hashish, you know? Okay. So, the people, they were high. The youth came, but nobody noticed. So, the prophet said to them, the Roman would be victorious. By the time they wake up, everybody believe it's always a prophecy. Thank you very much. This is a prophecy. The prophet, he said this verse, after they being victorious, that they will be victorious. The hadith in front of you, and it's sahih. Is it sahih? Yes, it is sahih. <laughs> so when I say to you, everything they come with is a fraud, I am not joking. Secondly, even in Arabic, it says, The Roman will be victorious in Fibra Isanin. So let us say that because some, like they say, the time when he said that and the word brother i mean it's going to have to happen between three to nine but based on studies if that happened in certain time forgetting about this hadith muhammad he said that and it take more than 12 to 13 years before the victory happened if the other report is true but as you see the hadith is authentic so we cannot even you know argue about it
<clears throat> All right, I think it's time to block some people. We say to them only Muslims and they keep calling. Let me block you. Hmm. Okay, somebody he says he is a Christian and the Muslims ask him questions about Christian. We will take a break with this person and we will see what he wants, just as an exception. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Hello? Yes. You are live on air. Uh, I'm sorry if I bother you. No, no problem. You see, but uh, we are taking uh, call, calls from uh, Muslims only, but I will take as an exception because you sound like you are uh, desperate for some answer. No, no, no. Hmm. I didn't notice if you say only Muslim tonight, but you say uh, a Christian can call tomorrow, so I call. Can I call you tomorrow if I can? No, I will call you tomorrow. No problem. No, but tomorrow we will be in the other channel, and there we don't speak about Islam. Go ahead. What do you want to say to me? So you are a Christian? I am a Christian. So what do you think about Muhammad? Is he a false prophet? Of course. Uh, okay. I don't so what the what the, what the questions the Muslims ask you? Give me the most important because we don't want to waste time, please. Uh, actually. Uh, the things that Muslim blame about Christianity in my country it's not about a Muslim it's about the Christian so I guess it's match it was it is match if I, if we uh, talk about it tomorrow because your channel tomorrow my friends we don't Christian. talk we don't we, there we don't talk about Islam here we talk only we talk we can talk about it so give me what they say to you about Christianity okay tell me what they say to you Okay. Uh, there's a few things. Uh, wait, wait. Give me time. No. Right. Okay, my friend, by the time you find the questions, we will go to sleep. Take care. I mean, what is this? What is this? Like, if you see the text he's sending me, like, Muslims asking questions, questions like, please, please, please. So I said, okay, let us, you know, give him time. And then what are the questions? You don't know. Uh, we have Muslim uh, Abbas saying, please read the Turmuzi and tell me if this uh, 31 uh, to 5 was not a prophecy. What uh, 31 to 5 not a prophecy? Uh, Abbas, Abbas, we are reading the Turmuzi. In front of us, we have a Turmuzi. This is a Turmuzi in front of your eyes. Isn't it? <laughs> in front of you is a Turmudi and it's Sahih what's wrong with you Abbas secondly if I say those Roman and the Persian uh, they have a 300 years war they lose, they win, they lose, they win they attack each other, they lose they win, they lose, they win, etc so if I say they lose now, they will win later, this is not a prophecy, this is stupid actually. Because they lose many times and they win many times. But the final victory of the Roman took long. Right? 
This guy is a Muslim. I blocked him. I thought because I told him. Okay, hold on. I need to find his name now. I blocked him. I think I blocked him. Okay, no, no he's not. Uh, oh, okay. Saying the following verse was not revealed. Oh, okay. Okay, let us see. Let us call him. And he says, I, I'm lying. So he called me lying, but he will not answer now. Yeah, he will not answer. So they call me liar, but they don't want to confront me. You see? They call me liar. They say it doesn't say, and then the verse was revealed. It's in front of you. Read it. Then the following was revealed. I mean, imagine he is texting me and Abbas in the chat too. Potatoes. They are. They are saying it doesn't say that. Then the following verse was. It says in front of you. This is your even Islamic translation. And as long as you are saying to me, read the Tirmidhi. Well, this is the Tirmidhi. Isn't it, this is a Turmudi and this is Sahih? Do you see it? So this is how the prophecy became fulfilled. It's a stupid statement. Muhammad, he made the prophecy after things happened. And this is the prophecy being fulfilled. Ah, what we can do? And this, this guy who is calling me liar in Skype, he is saying, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that, CB. It's in the front of your eyes. Are you blind? Read carefully. On the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persians. So the believers were pleased with that. Then the following verse revealed. And the funny, they say to me, read the Turmudi. This is the Turmudi. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Abbas. So you are saying to me, read the Turmudi, different hadith, and the different hadith says the, the prophecy was fulfilled. So how the hadith here is authentic and the other hadith is authentic? Which one is authentic? If you say both, well, that means Islam is stupid. What do you say? Hmm? Do you want to call Abbas and read the Tirmidhi for us so we can laugh together? And you can read the, the Tirmidhi, the one you want. And I am not responsible for how many people will laugh at you. What do you say? <clears throat> Anyone? You know, the, the signs of corruption is so clear. As long as you accept the book of a Turmudi, and we are reading for you from the book of Turmudi, and it says here Sahih. But this is a problem for you. So, what do you do now? You want to jump like a monkey. Oh, read the other one. So what the other one will do? What exactly the other one will do? You Muslims have hadith up to the request. It's like a menu. Either your prophet said that or he did not. If he said that, this is stupid. If this is what happened, this is stupid. And yes, it says this is what happened. So what we can do now? Anyone? So as you see, their prophecy 
Uh, Abbas, uh, can you pause for us the hadith, the one you want us to read? Post it as it is. I will put it in the screen. We want to laugh. Can you do it? Abbas only count hadith which is not against Quran. Well, no problem. Abbas is a fraud because the muta is against the Quran. That's mean Abbas, you know, you remember I asked him if your wife, somebody asked her to do breastfeeding for adult. He said, you will, as the prophet says so. Right? He don't, he, don't, he don't mind. He's a fraud. Muta is in the Quran. Where is the forbidden of the muta? It's in the hadith. You just said if the if the hadith is against the Quran, we don't take the, uh, the hadith, we take the Quran. So you practice muta? Are you doing, do, uh, doing muta delivery now, Abbas? You don't do uh, pizza no more? So what do you do? Like you drive your car, you deliver girls? Can't you find a Tirmidhi? No, I cannot find it. Post it for me. You guys, post, post, uh, post. Uh, why, why you don't post the hadith for us? Post it, post it. I want your name next to it. I want your name next to the hadith. Because that will make it perfect comedy. Post the hadith for us. And I promise you, I will put it in the screen. I will take a snapshot selfie for you with the hadith posted by you put it in the screen do it just do it for the sake of mutama hmm? consider yourself doing mutama pause the text what you will lose. So you look, look at this. They challenged me to put something in the screen and they themselves, they will not post it. Are you searching for it? You can call a friend. And don't worry, Mimi Hijab is not here, so he will not edit the video. Unless later he watch it, he will edit it. And he will say you will be refuted. Like what happened to Yasser Kadri, Kadi. So as you see, what they claim it's a prophecy is stupid. What is the prophecy of the? Let me show you a prophecy of Muhammad. Serious prophecy. Hold on. I mean, how Muhammad knew this unless Allah he told him. Look at this. Hmm. Look at this prophecy. How Muhammad knew this is science, brother. Muhammad taught by Allah the science of biology how the baby is made first in the quran he says the sperm of the man came from the backbone and by the way that's true brother i have a friend his backbone hurt him and he don't uh, have babies <laughs> i'm just joking the messenger of allah said the man water is thick and white and the women water is thin and yellow so muhammad he think that women have yellow liquid in their private part when they have a sexual intercourse he think this is the sperm of the man. And whichever of them comes first, the child will resemble it. Why Muslims don't make an uh, article about this amazing prophecy? And now, by the way, like thank, thanks to the prophet, you know, I can get married because I was afraid if I get married. And then what if my son look like me? That's disgusting. But now I know the trick. I will make my wife have orgasm first. And then the baby will look like her. Hello, finally, I can do it. Before I was worried, my, my son would shoot me. He grew up, he says, look at me, look at me, I look like you. I say, son, it's not my fault. He said, why no, you will look like me. He said, if you, if you follow the prophet's step, I will not look like you. So now, if you are an ugly person, you are not good looking, maybe your wife, she is good looking, or vice versa, uh, you know what to do, my brother. Brother, this is the biology of the prophet. How the 
prophet he knew this. Hmm? There is no way Muhammad is not a prophet. This is proven to be correct, scientifically correct. It's the water of the women in her private part, which is yellow. And why it's yellow, my friend? She is an uh, infection or what? Why? What is that? You see, for me, I was really always yellow. And then they told me, I, I'm not really, I don't know about this stuff. Like, yes, it's true. I have like 10 degrees in uh, biology, brother, like Muhammad, you know. But I did not go to university uh, and study that. So they told me that women who have such a thing, yellow, it's mean they have infection. So Muhammad, he think that women who have uh, water in their vagina when they have inter, you know, intercourse, that is what caused the baby to look like. And he is talking about washing it. This is outside. This is not inside the body. This will, this, will, this will decide how the baby look like. Don't you think this is too much? What happened to Abbas? Where is the Hayat Abbas? You could not find it, Abbas? So obviously, Muhammad is a true prophet. You know? Otherwise, there's no way he will know. This guy, he doesn't know how to write, how to read. How he will know this? It's impossible, brother. And then the Quran come and says, women have a sperm coming from their ribs. And by the way, it's true. Once I was in the beach, I was naive at that time because I was studying the, the Prophet teaching. I saw a woman, she have something like in her chest. I thought this is lotion, you know, she put like, you know, for sun blocking lotion maybe i was naive you know and later i learned from the prophet from the quran that women have a sperm and come from the upper side of their chest look at this filthy woman she have a sperm she have like a, you know uh, those are not the breast by the way those are breast testicles according to muhammad women don't have breasts those are testicles that they are big by the way alhamdulillah hmm? If we go to the Quran, just to show you how Muhammad is a prophet, it's, it's clear, it's, it's, it's clear like the sunlight, you know. How you can deny that? I mean, we cannot. I mean, stop fooling yourself. Muhammad, obviously, is a prophet. Chapter 86, verse number 7. It's a gushing fluid coming from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. How Muhammad knew this? That's amazing. And thank God I am still single. You go to the bedroom, you know, and your wife, she take off her bra. Instead of seeing breast, you see testicles. That's scary. And they are big. Like, what? Get ready. I don't know how good you are in jumping. If you are in the first floor, of, it will be fine. But if you are in that 20th floor at that moment, this is why I advise you before, you know, in the, in the wedding night, don't take high floor. What if she have a breast testicles, as you see in the Quran? What you will do? And you want to jump? You send me the hadith in Skype? <clears throat> no, 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 Skype. I, I know you. My Skype is not connected to my system here. I have only the sound. Post it there, post it there. <clears throat> no, you have to post it there. Okay. <sighs> Alif Lam Mim, the Roman have been defeated in the nearest land. Okay. One day that those ayat was revealed, the Persian has defeated the Roman, and the Muslims had wanted Roman to be victorious because they were the people of the book so allah said about that and that on that day the believer will rejoice with the help of allah he help whom he wills okay and then the Quraysh we wanted but this is not a hadith you either this is a this is an explanation where is the hadith i mean do you see how stupid you are the hadith is in front of you this is the hadith secondly you are saying that in the day of Badr, 
If you calculate the date of Badr and the final victory of the Roman, you will see many years after that will pass 9 or 11 or 12 years. So Muhammad again is a fraud. Even if we go by this calculation. Because in Arabic, he used the word Badr. Badr have to be between 3 to 9. As simple as that. However, in the front of us, we have a very accurate hadith. It says clearly that the Roman, they've been victorious. Right? And the verse was revealed after. You like it, you don't like it, it's your business. And this is Sahih. Deal with it. And the one you gave me is stupid. Secondly, here, you know, by the way, there's, there is something wrong. Yeah, sure, I will take your call. Hold on. Abbas, you are not calling anyway. Here we go, we call you. <laughs> Answer Abbas. Abbas, answer. Are you going to answer or what? Okay, hold on, let me mute. I think my Skype is stuck too. Yeah, I think my Skype is stuck. Hold on. Let's try again. Abbas, answer the call. Yes, Abbas, go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Yeah, I'm calling you from the other. Can you take my call? Because then on this one, I don't have um, headphones. I'm calling you from the other number. Can you take my call, please? You are not calling me other number. I what number? You. What is the name there? What is the name there? How do I know it's you? Is that you, Susu? You call yourself Susu? Who is this Susu? Hot Susu. Abbas is the hot susu? What is that? Ali, ah, Al Alicia. Abbas is Alicia now. Amazing. Okay, Abbas. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Hello, CB. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you, Alicia. Go ahead. Yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> why you didn't read that? This I gave you, man. Hmm? Because I was exposed. Go ahead, mind. read it. No, I. You see, I, 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 I'm looking for it here in the screen to find it, so we can put it in the screen, so we can laugh together. You know. No, that's okay. People can hear it. Just read. Okay. Okay. Go. Go read. Okay. Go read it. Okay. Go. Read it. Okay. Go. Read it. Read it. Okay, go, read it. Okay, go, read it. <laughs> go. Go ahead. Read it. Here we go. You are with me. Okay. It's, it's a very long hadith, and I'm pretty sure you know about this hadith, but you... My friend, my friend, the hadith you gave me, first of all, is not even a hadith. Secondly, we have a Termudi. We, ha we, have, we have a Termudi, the same book, authentic, saying that the verse revealed after the after they've been victor victorious. How you can refute the and first I, one? And I gave you the hadith, which is in detail. Okay. So which one you're gonna take? My, my, my for friend. Your own advantage, you're gonna take something. Is, 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 the, is, is the one? Is the one you? Is the one you gave me? Is Sahih? Of course, it's Sahih. Okay. <laughs> is, is the one <laughs> I gave you? Four. Okay. Is the one I gave you is Sahih? The one you read is Sahih. Yeah, but this okay. one in detail. So okay, hold on. So read with me carefully. There's no difference. Obviously, this is what happened. Oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Read carefully. Here we go. Okay. You see, because there is, no, you see, the the, the the difference is that you are a fool and you think there's a difference. Here we go. This is the same writer. Sure, sure. This is the same writer saying 
read carefully that in the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. Yeah. Does it say that? Yeah, yeah, Does it say that? Okay. Abbas, Abbas. Does it say in the day of Badr, the Roman had victory? I can't see your screen. I can't see your screen. Doesn't matter. We show you the hate already. Come on. One, one second, one second, one second. One second. Uh, so I'm, I'm not on YouTube right now. Okay. Okay. One, okay. one minute. Because I'm using my, this is my iPad. I'm calling you from no here. Problem. the phone I'm using All right. for looking up for the hadith. All right. So that's why, one second, just one second. Wonderful. No problem. Uh, I think I'm going to mute uh, okay, screen. Just one second. Can you hear me? Yeah. But, so uh, now? How I'm going to mute YouTube right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. right. I read that hadith what you just right. gave. So when this happened, yeah, so my, my, my friend, Abbas, let us let us speak, uh, speak as a Stop asking me questions. When when Stop this happened, no, no, no. When the verse was no revealed, questions. here here is here is so clear. When this verse was revealed, when this verse was revealed, please read for me. Finish your whatever you want to say. Then I'm going to speak and don't don't interrupt. No, me. we are having a conversation. When when this no, verse when that having, when just, that verse just, was revealed, when that verse was revealed, read for me, please. But according to this hadith? Yes. Oh, I see. You already made your point. So, now can I make my point? Okay, hold on. You see, Why are you so afraid, man? who, who, who is talking about making my point and making your point? Does the hadith say that the verse revealed after they have victory? Yes or no? Make your point. Then I'll make my point. Don't ask what me make my point? I repeat the question 1,000 times. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, when you finish, then I'll tell you everything. <laughs> Yes or no? Why are you afraid, man? Okay, well, yes or no? Right. Because there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing to debate about. Does it say in the day of Badr, the the, oh, yeah. the, the, okay. the, the, the Roman were victorious? Okay, now I'm gonna explain what I'm trying to say here. I'm okay, sure go you're not gonna let me speak, isn't it? Okay, right. go, ahead. go, ahead, Abdul, go. Uh, alhamdulillah. 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 I like your I, I like your Arabic. It Remi, re, remind me of my Armenian friend who speaks a little Arabic. Okay. Okay, Alhamdulillah. But you understand what I said, yeah? No, I don't understand what you are saying. No, I don't understand what you're saying because, because the verse you because the verse you quote for me is about Muhammad being a fraud. Why are you so afraid of the Quran? Say the truth has arrived and falsehood perish. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. The verse the, the verse you just said the verse you said. How the how the truth was revealed? Can you can you tell me? What do you mean? How the truth was? You mean how the revelation started? No, no. The verse you quote for me. The verse you just quote for me in Arabic, which you do not know how to read. So, okay. how this verse was revealed? How you mean asbabul uh, nuzul? You talking about? You you tell me how this verse was revealed. I don't know the asbab in Nazul, but it's a fact. By killing his, Quran, by killing people. So now, if we have a debate and I have a gun, I shoot you. That will make me a person who have the truth in my side. This is what you are saying to me. Oh, okay, okay. Educate me. When was it revealed? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You are making the point. Let's see I'm, the I point am making then. a point. Then I am making a point. You're just giving me a difference. I, I, I am making a point. What what verse we are reading from? Just to be sure. What the number? Uh, chapter f uh, 2 was 111, I believe. Okay, chapter 2, verse 111. Yeah. Are okay. you running away from this Tirmidhi? No, we are going to laugh at both, all of them. We are, you know, we are here. Okay. We are here. Me, I'm going to come back to refute you. 111, you said? You said, you, you you said 111, okay. right? Chapter 2 was 111, I believe. That's all right. what it is. Okay. Read. I believe and I'm, I'm pretty sure, yes, that's what uh, it is. Uh, the verse says here, they say that the one who will enter heaven, either Jew or Christians. Where is that? No, no that's why I'll pull out to Baha'i. Sorry, this is, I think it's chapter 4. Verse let us use this one. Let, listen, listen, let us use this one so we can laugh together. No, the no, Christians, hold on, hold on, hold on, just to show you how stupid your prophet is. You just quote for me a verse, you do not know the number, so by mistake you quote for me a verse will, will destroy you and destroy your prophet. It says, they say that the one who will enter heaven, the Jews or the Christians, say, bring your proof if you are truthful. Is it the Quran says the Christian and Jews will go to heaven? Some of them, not all. No, it doesn't say some. Does it say all? Does it says it say all? yes. It says all. Let us go to the verse. Yeah, yeah, you know, here we go. Yasser Kadri is uh, trying to uh, learn Arabic. Okay, let us see. Okay, hold on, hold on. Read for me. Read for me. Read for me. Read for me. Does it say? Does it say all or no? Sorry. 
Does it say all the Jews and all the Christians will go to heaven and even the Sabian? Chapter, oh, absolutely not. The same chapter, not. chapter 2, verse number even, 62. Even all, even all Muslims not going chapter to Chapter 2, to okay, God. read, no problem, read. Chapter 2, the same chapter, chapter 2, verse number 62. Chapter 2, verse 62. Yeah. Are we changing the topic here right now? No, we are not. No, I sh <laughs> we are not. You showed me nothing. Okay, what, what you are showing me, uh, Abbas, 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 what you are showing me, you are telling me that we Muslims are a bunch of idiots. We say something and we say the opposite second page. This is what you are saying to me. No, Thank no, you. No, 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 no. Well, this here we go. Is it, okay, well, if you want, we can go back to that topic. It does it say in the Hadith that this revealed after they've been victorious? Yes or no? No, no, and no, and never. What do you mean, no? Read it. Okay, we go read it. Okay, okay read it. Read. Okay, read it. Read it. No, no, read it. Read it. No, read it. Read it. Read it. No, read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. It's in front of you. In which day? In which day? Abbas. Abbas. In which? In which day? In which day? Let's make it simple. In which day? The the Roman was were victorious. Okay. In which day? May I allow to speak? May I allow you, what's wrong with you? Yes, we are talking. Yes no? You see, uh, you, you no. quote for me the other verse. We go there. You are saying, are oh, you changing topic? We go back here. You, you want, are you want me to speak? No, no, what, but you're not letting me speak. I'm asking you, in which day, yes, in this yes, in this hadith, do you, yes no? do you agree with this hadith? Yes or no, first? Do you agree with it? Yes or no? Uh, yes or no, again. Do you agree? No, no, because we, wanna, we don't want to make it confusing. You're trying to confuse yourself only. Either you say, either you say you agree with it. We want to know your point, your where you stand. Do you agree with this hadith? Yes or no? Oh, not your with your understanding. I understand the hadith. I, understand I I'm asking you, not my understanding, your understanding. Do you do you accept this hadith? Yes or no? I I accept hadith with the context, of course. This is not a problem. This is not a question. Do you accept this hadith as it is? Yes or no? This this is not in full context. That's what I'm telling you. My friend, the full context or short context does it say on the day of Badr the Roman had victory over the Persian, so the believer were pleased with that, and then the following verse was revealed. Does it say that or not? Okay. Again, yes or no? Am I allowed to say anything? Uh, what do you mean you want to say anything? What do you mean you say? Does it, does it say that or no? Does it say? Does it say in English? Abdul, Abdul, you speak English very well, better than me. Then the following, then the following verse was revealed. Does it say? Does it say then? Does it say then? Does it say then? The following. Again, yes or no? Was revealed. Does it say okay? No, yeah, I'm the one who was my time with kids. You are a kid. Just, no, 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 no. Just get no, no, get one No, 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 no. You are just a kid. You are wasting my time. It says that in the front of you. We we'll debate about what. So what you know, the, the the way to get away from this garbage is to say, I will show you other hadith have more details. What details? Here we go. It says in the day of better, the Roman were victorious. And the believer were pleased with that. And by the way, here you will see the stupidity of Muhammad. Muhammad in the beginning, he was a hypocrite man as usual, all the way to the end. But in the beginning, he was trying to say himself that he is a close to the Christian. Actually, in that moment, Muhammad, he was claiming to be Nasara. Otherwise, what he have to do with the Christian being victorious? Isn't it the Roman is the same one? Muhammad sent letter for them, convert to Islam or I will kill you. Why he is pleased that they are victorious? If they are kuffar anyway. What he have to do with the Christian to be pleased if they are victorious or not? But because at that moment, Muhammad, he claimed to be Nasara. He married from Khadija, I remember before. And in order to marry Khadija, you have to marry in the Nasara church. The Nasara will not allow you to marry their daughter unless you are marrying in a church. Church of the Nasara, like Jehovah's Witnesses, cult. So Muhammad, there's no question he was claiming to be Nasara. And now, when they made, start making fun of him, ah, the Christians, they are defeated. What do you say? Muhammad, he responded that Allah told him that they are defeated, will be victorious. When? In the day of Badr, when the news came that they are victorious already. And the story in front of you. And then you want to say to me, there's more details. More details, what do you want more? It says here, it's giving us the date. It's given us which day? It's given us when it was revealed. It was after they rejoice, not before. After the believer rejoice. Why the believer rejoice? Because they had victory. Same time, if I say the American, you know, uh, they have victory or they lost. Let us say they went to Vietnam, they lost. 
and they will have victory. Well, they have victory. I mean, this is a great, powerful army. They lose, they win. You know, war is long, especially if you are fighting long war with the same nation. Today, this uh, this is a battle. This is this is not a war. Actually, they 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 won because the final the final victory of the Roman was way long after. And it's very embarrassing. He says to me that the truth come and the false been defeated. Okay, we go to the front of you. And he said to me, it doesn't say that Christians, all of them, they will go to heaven. It says all the Christians. Read it. Those who believe in the Quran, those are the Muslims. And those who follow the Jewish scriptures, those are the Jews. All the Jews. All the Jews who follow the, the Jewish scriptures. All of them. And the Christians. By the way, he, he did not say the Christian. He said Nasara. He never said that. You see, the whole Quran never said the word Christian, in fact. For Muhammad is a stupid idiot. He thinks that the Nasara are the Christians. For around him, there is no really Christians. There is Nasara. And Nasara is a cult spread in the Arabian Peninsula by some Jewish people who they are Nasara. Those Nasara, they run away, you know, the, the Christian, they reject them. The real Christian, they reject them. So they escape where there is no Christians have authority. And Arabia was not under the control of the Roman. So they moved to Arabia. And they spread their cult there. And Khadija was Nasara, and Waraq ibn Nufal was Nasara. And even the Hadith confirmed that. And if you ask any Arab Christian, are you Nasara? He will say no. Not a single Arab Christian, including me, will accept to be called Nasara. In Arabic, in Arabic we call himself Masihiyin or Masihi. If I'm speaking about individual, I say Masihi, which means from the name of the Messiah. All those, and Muhammad, because he is big hypocrite too, in front of the Sabian, he's a Sabian, so he promised the Sabian to go to heaven, but the Sabian, they worship stars. The Sabi and they have like they, they are the same as the Mormon, you know. So they have some kind of fantasy. So they believe that there's gods, not not God, gods, and those gods are angels and they have ranks. There's angels who can create, there's angels who can build, there's angels who can uh, redeem, there's angels who can uh, maintain, there's angels who do maintenance. Uh, uh, you know, they have a lot of things. And Muhammad, he copied a lot of his stories from them, from the Sabian, including even the evolution he was doing. This is Sabian evolution. If you go and search for the Sabian evolution in YouTube, you will find the videos, the Sabian, which is a very old religion. Doing evolution, you will see it's exactly as Muslims do the evolution today. Actually, even, even the, the Hadith confirmed that Arab they believe Muhammad was a Sabian. Let us see if we can find it. Hold on. Here we go. You will find that when uh, Muhammad and his uh, uh, gang, they were traveling, they found a woman, she have water, they want water. So they say to her, where we can find water? She replied, uh, I was there, which means pointing her finger to the place. And there was uh, this hour yesterday and my people are behind me. They requested her to accompany them. She asked where? They said to Allah Messenger, she said, do you mean the one is called Sabi? What they call him? Sabi. The Muslim, they say Sabi is someone who changes religion. That's a lie. Sabian is a very old religion. Uh, but, uh, they call you Sabi if you join them. Secondly, if he changes religion, well, that's mean he changes religion to be a Sabi. Otherwise, why do they want to call him Sabi? Why didn't call him Nasara? You know what I mean? There's many religions. Why they call him Sabi? Those are the Sabian. Then the Arabic make it even more clear. You know, it says it clearly. Is that the Sabian you are talking about? They said yes. 
And between two brackets, they say with the new religion. That's a false. It's not there. You see, that's why they put it between two brackets. They replied. They didn't say no. They said yes. The same person. He's a Sabian. So, Muhammad the hypocrite, in the beginning, he was promising everybody to go to heaven, hoping that they would join him and they would accept him as a prophet. Like Obama. Obama, in front of the Jews, he's a Jew. He wear their hat. He kissed the, he, 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 he shake his head in the front of the timber war. In the front of the Muslims, he is a Muslim. In the front of the Christian, he holds the Bible and he go to the church, African church, and he sing with them, glorifying God. In front of the atheists, he make fun of the Bible. That is Muhammad. And even the Muslims, they confirm that Muhammad is a fraud. He do protects. They ask Abbas, why Muhammad have many wives? They say to spread this now. That is protex. That means a fraud. He used women for the sake of his agenda. That's not from God. And the second you ask them, does it say that he will not answer? Yes or no? I mean, why we need, you see this, when they try to explain a very simple answer, that means there is something wrong. Why you cannot say yes or no? Say yes, no, yeah, no. Very simple. Why you need to make a story and yes or no? They were not there. Is Sharia uh, law is dangerous for non-Muslims? Sharia law is dangerous first for Muslims, before us, you know. Uh, this is why the Muslims, they don't want it. Do you know where, which country they practice Sharia law? I don't know any. I mean, there is some tribes on uh, Pakistan, they are practicing that, where Abbas is coming from, and that's why he ran away from there. Some places in Afghanistan, maybe. Even Saudi Arabia, they are not practicing Sharia law no more. I saw a video of a guy going to taking uh, taking video in Mecca, and he is not a Muslim. Then the Crown Prince is changing everything. Women they can drive, women they can travel, women they can have their passport. Uh, they allow people to sing. They have uh, dancing parties. They invite singers from around the world. So even Saudi Arabia is trying to separate itself from the cult of Islam. Right? Not a single Muslim, all those potatoes, you see them in YouTube speaking about Islam, not even one of them would love to see Sharia law practiced. According to Sharia law, if you wear jeans, you will be punished and they will break your legs. Go and watch Al-Qaeda and ISIS videos. For wearing jeans, they will beat you. You cannot. A woman, she cannot sit in the chair because the word chair is a meal. How a woman, she can sit in the chair. You cannot have a store for lingerie and the lingerie is in the, in the display. You have to hide it inside. And then women, they do inside what they do inside. I mean, you have curtains, so now they can do more, more evil stuff. Like what happened to Nabhanit Tamar. If you remember the story of Nabhanit Tamar, when he came to Muhammad and he told him, I did with the women, what a man, everything the man do with the women except intercourse. Muhammad, he said to him, don't worry, this is lemon. This is what? This is lemon. What is lemon? Lemon is a small sin. What is a small sin? Touching a woman, playing with her private part, having orgasm, kissing her, touching her anywhere. She is touching you too. This is called lemon. As long as you don't do intercourse, it's okay. And I changed the name of them to say I'm lying. So when we say Sharia law is a joke, if a person, he, he go home and he found his wife cheating with somebody, he need to bring four witnesses and they have to see the private part of the male, go and excuse my language, inside the private part of the female. How you can do that? So you cannot punish her. You have no right to do anything because you have no witnesses. Right? How a woman, she's been raped. She's going to prove that she's been raped. She needs to bring four witnesses. If you read the whole Quran, by the way, you will not see even where it's speaking about rape. I mean, how such, a, such an important topic is dropped in the Quran. How the Quran did not forget to say that you can do lemon and it's okay. You can take a married woman. Imagine a married woman. 
not a separated woman, not a woman in divorce. She is in the house of her husband. They are married and they sleep together. She go to do shopping. She come to the campaign of Muhammad and he play with her and he do everything the man he do with the women except intercourse. Muhammad, he gave in this verse. He says those who avoid the greater crimes, shameful deeds. This translation is very funny. Where is the lemon? Where is the word lemon? Let me change the translation. I mean, the, the translation of Muslims is really weird. You change the translation, you feel like you get you get a new book right away. Huh. Look at this. We just change the translator. Both of our Muslims, and those who avoid the great sin, greater sin, and al fawahish, fawahish, which is illegal sexual intercourse, etc. When they are uh, uh, angry, they they forgive. What is that? Where is uh, how you avoid it? How you avoid those? If you do lima, you take a woman to your bed, you do with her everything, and this is not a big sin. Ah, oh, because he did not do intercourse. Hmm. Right. So this chapter here, chapter forty-two, mentioning that, and the same. In chapter 53, verse number 32. Here he add, illa laman, they translate it as small faults. How this is can be small faults? How this is can be small faults? Any Muslim can tell me? This is a small fault? Taking a woman from her husband, playing with her, having orgasm, and this is in Islam is a small fault? And this is not even considered as a sin. So why your wife, she wear a burqa? If a man, he can touch her, he can play with her private part. He can he play with her body. And this is a small fault. I mean, imagine they say the word is small fault. Let me show you the interpretation for the verse. So the Muslim, they will not say, oh, where, where it says what you are saying. Hold on. Because you know them. You know them, right? We show them from their books. They say it doesn't say that, CP. It doesn't say that, CP. Okay. So, chapter 53, verse number 32. Give me a second. <clears throat> you see in the in English they, they take off all the interpretation, it's not there. I cannot find the story of Nabanit Tamar in the book here in the website. Let me see a different one. They took it off. The guy, he said clearly, I did with her everything the man he do, except intercourse. Now, here we go, actually. But here, they don't have the story. But let us see the interpretation of Ibn Kathir. Let us see what is a lemma. Hmm? Take a note, a lemma. This says, uh, a lemma is the following. Uh, commit zina by looking the lips by kissing and the hand by transgressing and the feet by walking and the sexual organ either uh, materials or etc by by sexual intercourse so if you have sexual intercourse that will come from the adultery if not this is all is a lemon let us see the front uh, place The story were about Nabhanu Tamar is gone. Nabhanu Tamar, Tamar means the one who sells uh, palm fruits. So a woman, she came to him and she said, uh, I, uh, I have uh, 
you know, he's, uh, I want to buy like some fruit. So he said to her, go, go inside. I have, you know, a lot of a fruit, better fruit inside. So she went inside and looked like she is a bad woman. So they start playing. Maybe let us see if we can get the book of Asbab and Nuzul. All right. Maybe we can find a story here. Uh, look like the story is not in this one. Give me a second. We need to get it busted. We can adjust it and go. Just to show you how the English books does not present what is written in Arabic. It's totally different. <clears throat> All right. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. It says here, Inna hadihi al ayah. This verse came in a person, his name is Nabhanu Tamar, and he used to have a store where he sell fruit of palm tree. A woman, she came to him, and by the way, her husband was doing jihad, he's a Muslim, fighting for Allah, to come and to buy from him fruits. Uh, he said to her, oh, inside the store, we have better than this. So she went inside, and then when she went inside, rawadaha, so he ask her to sleep with him and then she refused and she left this is here the story and then he came to the prophet he said let's see what happened she refused what exactly she refused to do intercourse but he did with her everything read carefully she came to the prophet and he says ya rasulullah o messenger of allah there is nothing a man does i did not do except intercourse which means with this woman Muhammad, he said, oh, maybe her husband is doing jihad. And this ayah came. So Muhammad confirmed that Lamam is touching the woman. He did everything with her. He did everything with this woman except intercourse. Muhammad, he told him this is a small fault, no problem. She is married. Her husband is fighting for Muhammad, doing jihad. She's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. And what is the answer of Muhammad? Oh, don't worry, this is lemon. And here it says, In the lemon, madun al wat, min al kubla, wal ramza, wal nadara, wal mudaja. Lemon is anything before do intercourse, like kissing, blinking, or like, you know, like touching her, like uh, punching her in her bum or somewhere or looking or even laying together. So if you lay together with the woman, she is naked and you are naked, it's okay, this is lemon. Kissing is okay, this is lemon. Touching each other, this is lemon. Don't do intercourse, you are fine. This is religion. And here we go. This is Tafsir Al-Qurtubi, as you see in the front of your eyes. I can give you the link actually. You can translate, but let me uh, let me get you more because this page is long. I will give you a shorter. Here we go. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Here we go. And this is the link you can use Google Translation to translate. This is what the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So if you compare what the Bible says and what, what the Quran says, you will notice that they cannot be from the same God. Which one in the Bible it says, you know, if it's better for you to take your eye away from going to hellfire? Even Muhammad, he confirmed, even the hadith, even the stories, that if the prophet, his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. If, if Muhammad, his eyes fall into a woman, 
her husband must divorce her. Let me find the reference. And look, we open our program today to show people that Muhammad had no prophecy, and no, no, no Muslim he come to us for the answer. Okay. Here we go. Uh, here they are counting the privilege of Muhammad. Imagine the Muslims are proud about the privilege of Muhammad. Number 10, the privilege number 10. Actually, I will use Google Translation to translate. Number 10, if his eyes fall into a woman, eyes of whom? Muhammad. Into a woman. If a, if a man, if Muhammad, his eyes fall into your wife, you have to divorce her immediately. Let us open it in Google Browser, because I'm not using Google Browser now. And use Google Translation. Does it say what I'm saying? Absolutely. Let us see. All right. You know, Google Translation is not accurate, but you know, it helps better than nothing. And uh, the, the problem with Google Translation, you know, especially when you are reading in like an old classic language. It has difficulty to translate those things. So we will use Google Translation. Here we go. Translate. We don't want to translate to Arabic. We want to translate to English. Um, change languages. It says unknown. Okay, Arabic. All right. Why this thing is coming Arabic? Choose another language. But it's not a change in the first one for me, which we need. All right, let us see. You read carefully, guys. Read carefully. This is the Google translation. They are counting the privilege of the Prophet. Most of it is about sex, and the rest about money. This is the privilege. You believe it? So look at this. The ten privilege. If his eyes fall in a woman, her husband, he is obligated to divorce her, so the Prophet he can if her, not marry her. Do you see it? This is a privilege of a prophet? Are we making things up? This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And this is the book of Al-Qurtubi. Interpretation, as you see in the front of your eyes. Chapter of al ahzab verse number 50. The Prophet have 16 privilege, and most of them is about his private part and about his pocket. Right? The Abbas don't change the topic. Do you agree with that hadith or no? And you got a list of Muhammad prophecy, like what? The first one, it was a fraud. We showed you the, the prophecy of the prophet about orgasm. What about the prophet prophecy about women have a sperm coming from the upper side of their ribs? What about this one? What we would do with it? Let us see if this is true. You see, Abbas is trying to change topic. Embarrassing. If, if, if Muhammad, he went to the house of Abbas with my respect to his wife, and he liked his wife, Abbas, he must give her his wife to the prophet. And I'm sure Abbas would not mind, by the way. He's very open-minded. 
I mean, they say, you know, myself and my mother and my father for you, Prophet. Anything. You're my, the wife, we get, take the wife. Sleep with the child. Right? <clears throat> you know, the video of Adnan Rashid, uh, you see, uh, uh, the, when, when a kid like Adnan Rashid, he make a statement. I, you know, how many times I get him busted, this idiot? He, he will never dare to, to call me. Uh, about tall building. First of all, the Arab have tall building before Muhammad was exist. Go to Yemen and see their buildings. Secondly, if you read the, the hadith, you will see that the hadith itself exposed Muhammad to be a fraud. Me, Abbas, when I talk about it, Abbas, you want to talk about the tall building? Guys, Abbas want to tell us a prophecy of the Prophet. Hold on, let us call Abbas, just for fun. But I hope he want to do the same. I mean, we re repeat the same question one million times. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Yasser Kadi had me in Skype. Eh, let me block you. We don't have time for kids. Uh, Mahad, where is Alicia? Okay, Alicia, let us call Alicia. Alicia, she have for us. A list of prophecy. Let us see what Alicia she want. Yeah, man. Hey, Abbas. Hey, Abbas. So, I give you the prophecies and miracles of Muhammad Can I ask you one simple question? You want to ask me a question now? Is that about if I, one simple question? If the prophet saw you, is only yes or no. Is that a, if, is only yes or no? Go ahead, go ahead. But do you promise me? Do you, do you promise me? Do you, do you promise me? If we do this, yes. it will go for you and for me. If I say yes or no, you will not say uh, you want to play games. No, no, I'm saying, okay, I, I will say yes or no. I will, I will say, I will say yes or no. I will say yes or no. But do you promise me, if I ask you the same question, you will not say, I will not say yes or no the same? Or this is only will go for me? Uh, the next question you're going to ask me, I, I, will, I will do the same thing as well. Just okay, for the, for okay, go ahead. Okay, 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 go, go ahead, Abbas, go ahead. Okay. Now tell me, is your Bible still a book of frauds? Still a fraud book? Still? Yes or no? Still? Is your Bible, if your Bible, if your Bible is your Bible is still a book of frauds, a fraudulent book? Well, yes never, no? never was to be, uh, you know. That's no, a no, false. No, 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 no. Answer is yes or no. The question is saying still, was still. You have to, you, you have to take the word is still. You have to take the word is still no, off no, the no, question. No, no, that's not the answer. That's not the answer. No, yes, yes, you have yes, to take no. the word is still from the question because if I say not a still, that means it was a fraud. Answer. You see, you see, don't Abbas, don't 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 be a kid. Don't be a kid. Yes no? If you're asking me, is the Bible is the book of a fraud? I say no. It's your Quran, and the proof of that. You're a prophet. Here we go. You are the one oh, saying. No. You are you are oh, the no, one. No, no, I, no, I answered no, you. No, I answered you. I answered you. My book. My book. No. My no, book no, no, is not the book of a fraud, and let me get you busted. Is it your prophet? No, no, no. Is it Don't your prophet? I'm not I changing my your question. question. Are we are on the topic. I am not <laughs> changing your question. Is it your prophet who took an yes, oath? You are. Is it, are. Is, it you your, is it your is it your is it your a prophet who took an oath in my book? How shame how shame shame on you. First of all, shame on shame of shame of you to say that my book is a book of a fraud when your prophet he took an oath in it. Did he? See, that's not the answer. Answer is yes or no. This is the answer. The answer, my book never was a book of fraud. Hey, I'll give you the answer. Never, no, never was answer. the book of a fraud. Answer is yes or no. You never you was the book of a fraud. fraud. No, you need, you see, you are a coward. You are a coward. You are a coward. You, you are, I think the word is still. So if I say, no, it's not. So you are going to say, oh, so it was a book of a fraud before. Now it's not. By adding the word is still. It's a very, no, very stupid. You know how it is to say yes very, no, very. Isn't it? You are just, a, you are just a kid. No, Abbas, you Abbas so you did you a prophet? Okay, did you a prophet? I answered you. I answered you. I gave you an answer. I said no. My book. Shut up. My no. My book never was a book of a fraud. Now, did your prophet swear by it? 
You didn't give me the answer. So I gave you. Was only yes did, no. uh, did your prophet yes, swear no. by the book which you call a fraud? Yes, no. Did your prophet I... swear by the book you call a fraud? If yes, that means he's a fraud. Thank you. Go ahead. How you answer no. this? He, no, he didn't. He did. No, he didn't. He did. The hadith in front of you. Here we go. No. The hadith is Hassan. The, not authentic. The hadith. Oh, Hassan is not good now. What what Hassan mean? No, Hassan. Okay, is one of the kid, one Hassan of the grandsons, uh, one of the grandsons of your prophet. His name is Hassan. What Hassan mean? No, when it comes to hadith. Strip it. Strip it. Answer. Doubtful. What the word it's Hassan mean? The name. Thing. The name of the grandson of your prophet. His name is Hassan. What Hassan mean? Hassan in the name. What's mean? What does what it mean? Okay, what the, Hassan? Why do they call him Hassan? What does that mean? Good, isn't it? It's good. It's, it's good? Hassan is good. Yeah. Okay, so what's the problem now? Guys, it's good. The hadith is good. So what's the problem? I I I'm telling you the problem. What? It's good, but it's not authentic when it comes to hadith. How you call it good? How you, can, how you call it good, but it's not authentic, you idiot? Uh, okay, tell, tell, tell So if it's not authentic, uh, Abdul, Abdul, just, just to show you how you. stupid you are. So you call it good, but it's not authentic? So you Muslims, yes, you call something okay, good, but it's not good. That's where, that's where the charlatans like you came up play with the words. Abdul, so when you Hassan, that, Hassan is a rank of authentic hadith, you liar. Hassan is a rank Mr. of the scholar, authentic hadith. Mr. S Mr. Scholar, mm. tell me one thing. Why is not authentic? Why is Hassan? What is missing? Okay, can what? you show me, can you show what? me one, can you show me one scholar he said this hadith is not authentic? Challenge to you. No, the, the, the book, open the book of Hadith, it says Hassan. Okay, it, can you show me, okay, it says Hassan, and I ask you what Hassan good. mean, you said it's good. You, you are the one who said to me, it's mean good. So the scholar, they say, it's a good Hadith. Which means there's no problem with it. Why it's not authentic? Well, so is so how, not authentic? how it's not authentic? Why? Abbas, just get lost, Abbas. I want, a, I want an adult to talk to me. What we got, <laughs> what we got is just a kid. Look how stupid they are. I mean, the hadith is good, but not authentic. So how you call it good? How you describe it as good, if there's no proof of it? Because if it's not authentic, it's mean nothing good about it. You go to Abbas, you ask him, is this pizza you are delivering good? He say, yes, but it's not authentic. <laughs> it's not my made, made by pizza, it's made by poo, poo Do you see how they are I mean, right away when they accuse us with something, they accuse their prophet. If this book is a book of a fraud, how this idiot Muhammad, he says, okay, bring the Torah for me. And then he took the Torah and he put it in the top of a cushion. And he says, I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee. And then they say to me, oh, this is the, not authentic. It says good. It says, it, what has that mean? He says good. It's not me who said the word good, which make it more horrible. So look, before they used to hide behind the word Da'if. Da'if is not there. So now we play behind the word Hassan. Hassan is good. Uh, the, uh, good is bad in Islam. When Muslim, brother and sister, when we Muslim we say it's good, it means bad. It's a, like a secret code between us, brother. It says good, it's bad now. In the top of that, where, who is the one who said this is rejected? Nobody. In the top of that, isn't it the Quran confirmed that the Bible never been changed? And there's tons of verses. Look how many verses confirm. Uh, 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 which Allah has sent to you, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ What is what ma'akum? To what is with you. Believing in what is with you. Do you read it? This is the stupid Quran. And believe in what I revealed, confirming what is with you. What is what? With you. So the Quran, are you going to say this is da'if? He confirm what is with them. What is with them? The Torah and the Gospel. Hey Abbas, read the science of the Hadith. You are the scientist. You are the one who gave me the answer. Isn't it you who said it's good? 
Guys, uh, Abbas is saying to me, read the science of the hate. Science of what? You Muslims have no science about anything. You have science of urine. You have science of poopoo. You have science of shaving under arm. Science of shaving their private part. You have no science. Al Khomeini, he made fun of the Muslim Sunni. He says, fi fiqhil marahid. They have a huge library in the science of a private of bathroom, which means private part. Having sex with watermelon, using zucchini, using a, a piece of leather shape in a, in, a, in a shape of private part. That is your science. You as a Muslim Sunni. And now you are asking me, read the science of it. Isn't you who said to me, it's good? I said to you, what has I mean? I said, it's good. So it's good. What I need, what I need more. Farah, is he a Muslim? All the Muslims he will take. Uh, where is Far? I don't see. Let him text me. He will prove that Christianity is not the sole way. This is a guy from Pakistan. Let us see this guy. We have a Pakistani boy trying to compete with the with the uh, with Alicia. Will I answer you? You see that your question yes or no. You see, uh, 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 Abbas, you are just a kid. Will you say, is your book still a fraud or not? So if I say no, you will say, oh, so it's not a silly fraud? So it was a fraud. <laughs> I mean, very cheap of you. Abbas is like, like those women. You see them in, the, in, the, in, in, in London's, you know, and they are wearing short skirt and they have a bottle of wine in their hand and they are inviting customers. This is how silly you are. When I say silly, I say to you, yes or no. I say the Hadith says in the day of better. I don't say you're a prophet. Okay, Abbas, I'm going to ask you a question. Is your Quran still a fraud or not a fraud anymore? Yes or no? Do you see how silly you are? Stupid. I mean, you have a lack of... Int I feel sorry for your wife, by the way. I'm sure you are not the one who do shopping for the house. Because she sent you to, to buy zucchini, you will bring a cucumber. You don't know the, the different. Suppose that he's being smart, you know. Is your Bible still a fraud or not a fraud? Still fraud or not a fraud? So in either way, that means it's fraud. So how this question will be yes or no? Because whatever you say, it means you are agreeing. Very dirty trick from a stupid idiot. You're just a kid. You're like just a guy, you know, who have like his gum in his mouth and he's taking it out like, you know. Take the gum out of your mouth. Speak like a man. Where is this guy from Pakistan? I am a Muslim. Yahya Abbas. This guy, he is your, he's your daddy. Yes, my friend, Hello. you are live on air. What do you want to say to us, Mr. Muslim? Hello? Yes, Mr. Abbas, what do you want to say to us? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm a big fan. Um, you said you are a Muslim. I, I just want to say, hello, can you hear me? Are you a Muslim or not? Sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Hold on, wait, I'm going to change my mind. Are you a Muslim or not? <clears throat> Okay. I'm saying, are you a Muslim or not? Yes, I'm a speaker now. How are you doing? No, this is not a question. I'm asking you, are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, I, so how, 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 how you say to me, how, how you say you are a fan? Uh, because um, I actually, to answer that question, I was a born Muslim, but 
over these past couple of weeks listening to your program mm. listening to david wood's youtube channel uh -huh. videos okay listening to hatun tosh uh -huh. dr j uh -huh. um i've been doing a lot of research man uh -huh. and um i am now starting to realize that uh i've been brainwashed my whole life mm. um i've been taught see i'm a i'm a, I'm a somali boy mm -hmm. um so my culture my people you know um the religion of islam was was throughout history was was imposed on my people so um a lot of my people they don't they don't understand what the uh what the background of of um of this religion really is and and what it stands for today actually i was listening to one of your videos and i was um watching al uzza manat and a lot mm. the three goddesses mm. that originated mm -hmm. and um that's very interesting because that really makes sense on um, why the islamic symbol is a moon you know mm. i've always wondered that but no nobody nobody answered that question growing up so okay. um i'm a fan because uh from from this moment on i wanted to let you know on your show i am not a muslim all right so, um, i have left that pagan paganism um of a religion okay. and um it was all thanks to you and, and a lot of other people so i want you to know that all mm. right well not uh, don't thank me my friend thank the lord and you know, i hope that uh, the lord will open your eyes and you will be uh, what you want to be we are here just to help people and the lord is the only one who can help you for real uh do you so yeah. so now you yeah, left islam true. but what about you want to be a christian what do you think about Christianity? Uh, uh, for me, um, I understand that there's only one Lord and there's only one truth, okay. and everyone can can say whatever they want, but that's what I believe. Mm. And uh, for me today, I'm going to follow the uh, the true God, the Most High God. Okay, which is one? Which is that? Is that Christ, a Messiah, or someone else? Uh, that is Christ. Okay, that is I'm Christ, into that. Christian Prince. So you accept yes. Christ to be your savior? Yep, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I mean to that. My Lord. I'm happy for and, you. Uh, from this day on, I uh, um, uh, I believe in His death, uh, resurrection, and His deity. So. All right. What about uh, what about me, your what about no your family, my friend? What about your family? Jesus. Um, my family. Yeah. The, uh, are they still Muslims? My family are still Muslims. Yes. Are you trying? To, are you trying to explain to them? I mean, did you start or not yet to explain to them that Islam is false? Um, I haven't spoken to my family yet, but I am planning on speaking to my mother. Now okay. um, she's the religious one in the family. All right. Um. So, you know, um, for me, you know, in our house, uh, I grew up without a father, so I'm not really close with my dad. He's mm -hmm. also a Muslim. All right. Um. But um, my mom, my mother, my brothers, um, I feel so bad because because uh, they they they're they're asleep to to what's what they're actually worshiping. They don't really understand what it is, and mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say that my family is ignorant, but um, in this case they are. And in terms of what they're following, they don't they do, don't really know that you know. Do your mother speak you know, English? A couple, do a you? couple of months ago went to. Yeah. Huh? Do your mother speak English? Yeah, my mother speaking. Well, I'm well, from America. So yeah, why, 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 why you don't let her watch my videos then? Like share with her my videos. Maybe, maybe she, you know. You see, my my mother is um she's not um uh, really that advanced in the English language. She's um she can understand maybe bits and parts. Oh, okay. But she doesn't. She's her native language is Somali, and that's well, what she can read. And well, write maybe and maybe then this is where um, you where you you need to uh, to be involved to explain to her slowly. You know. Show her like mistakes in the Quran, stupid things in the teaching of Muhammad, and then slowly she will leave. Yeah, you know, step by step. Yeah, but you know, my, my family, man, it's um, it's uh, they're very very religious, and um, I know I know I'm I'm already expecting the fact that they're gonna. Um, I, I live on my own right now. I prepared for for these upcoming moments. I moved out of my house mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, so you know that way I don't get thrown out. You know, unless yeah. they understand that I'm not practicing yeah. um you know slam anymore so uh I'm, I'm i'm doing i'm doing um little by little so i'm still doing my research i'm still gathering up information you know and um uh that's that's the goal my goal is to bring my family out of the pit 
that, that is uh, Islam. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, uh, uh, I'm just hoping and praying to God that uh, uh, He allows me to live as, as as long as that needs to be done. So, I mean, do that. you know, that's that's my goal right now. But well, I, I'm I happy for you, my friend. Basically, if uh, to, if to, I can to help let you, you know that you've been you've been an influence. So you being you know Arab and being from that part of the world. I just want you to know that the information that you put on your um, on your channels is very, very, very exclusive. Not a lot of people understand the cultural aspect of Islam and the origins. That that that's stuff that I, I I've, I've been researching and digging and doing digging um, through your information that I've been receiving. So I want to thank you for that. You're welcome, my friend. I'm I'm happy for you. And if there is anything I can help with, like questions, uh, Muslims say something to you, trying to bring you back to the cult of Islam. And by the way, uh, you know, I, I feel sorry for you because now you will not get the versions. Do you know that? No? Yeah, I mean, you will no, not even true. even get a single version now. I, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> not a single version. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that that's nonsense, man. That's, that's nonsense. And um, that there's no way that I'm going to be going back. For me, um, I've never really been religious. Um, it's only been these past couple of months. How I came to realize that I was following the wrong religion, uh, I was watching this YouTube video of this man that was being very vulgar, and he was being very, um, you know, very nasty in the way that he was attacking Islam. I've never ever seen anything like that ever. His name is New Breed. He's on, he's on YouTube, hmm. and um, I follow his Patreon. So he basically was showing images of, you know, the Kaaba and people going around and where the seven times circling the Kaaba, where that originated from. And he had people kissing from the stone. And, and that's when, in my head, I never really thought about Islam critically till that point, hmm. where in my head, I finally started to realize, you know, what is the stone and why are we kissing it? You know, why are we going? My mother, she went to Umrah like a couple of uh, um <clears throat> A couple of months ago, so mm-hmm. so she went there. She kissed the stone and everything. She went around. I didn't get the chance to go with her. Thank God, I never went there ever in my life. I don't ever plan on going there now that I know the truth. But um, yeah, man, it's been an interesting couple of couple of months. Well, I'll I'm, tell you that. But well, I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm not following that anymore. But what is and, the most? Uh, what is the most thing like was? Uh, let us say, make you move to get out. I mean, what is the some like? There's something special made you really decide to leave Islam? I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I like there's I'm, I'm sure there's many things they come together. But if there is something yeah. very special was really, let us say, the the final break. And that's it. Something uh, you learn. The f- okay. Um, yeah, okay. So for me, that that video was the start. Okay, right. The, that video opened, was the starting point where I opened my eyes up. So from that point, before that, I never critically thought about Islam. I never cr- cr- criticized it because it, it was taboo. You know, you know the Islam. Yeah. They're, they're, that's that means you're weak in faith if you question your own. You know what I mean? So right. I never did that. But that was the first moment. The second thing, big thing, <laughs> that changed my mind was the preser- uh, per- preservation of the Quran. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a lie, big, big lie, big fat lie. Um, the Quran, the Uthman, the Quran, we don't even have those manuscripts. Um, <clears throat> but Mimi, uh, Mimi, Mimi Hijab did not help you to, to stay in Islam, like you could not. They, my what? friend, my friend. <laughs> I used to watch Muhammad Hijab videos, that's why it's so funny. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a kadab, and he's a, he's a big time deceiver. So yeah. I've came to realize that. Um, what, do, what do you think? And, and you know, when, when, so when you yeah. when you were a, a, Muslim, a Muslim, and uh, Muhammad Hijab he made the video saying Christian Prince is a sexual predator because I was saying to Muslim women suckle me. Did you yeah. did you see that part? Well, Hijab, he did. Yeah, I saw that. So yeah, what saw that. what what do you think that. about that part? Because he cut my video and the story is different. The woman she was saying bad things about Jesus, dirty things, and then I said, right. well, it's your yes. prophet who said that. So what do you think about some such a fraud? Who changed the story to make it the opposite? Hey man, that's that's what he does, man. You know he's a hypocrite, yeah. and uh, that's what I honestly think of the whole situation. Is he's hypocritical for that, and you know for them, you know they don't have any like 
real basis, what I came to realize is the Muslims, especially the even the scholars, you know, uh, by the way, Zakir Naik is, is one of the biggest fools I'm coming to realize right now, just going through his videos and stuff. Yeah. You know? But um, Muhammad Hijab and those guys, man, they, they need they need to uh, muster up some sort of argument in order to refute back. And they do it through deception. They do it through flipping your words. And they do it through changing the context in which they exactly. are referring to. They use many tactics, but this is very deceptive. And now even very, very even even he did he did edit into the video of his uh, teacher. Even his teacher he did edit into his video. <laughs> yeah, Yasser Kadri. Yasser Kadri is his sheikh. You know, always he interview yeah, yeah, him. No, yeah, he yeah, asked him what to do. Khan. Yeah. Suddenly yes. he said something. And the Muslims went crazy, and now they are editing his video, taking off what he said. They are ashamed of yeah. it. And now they are waging war on him. They will say, we will refute you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he took off. I saw how he took off the last uh, 30 minutes of his interview. where they're, uh, And, and I, I found that clip on Yasser Khalati's channel. You know? Yeah. I found that on his channel. And, I, and, I, I, and that's when I started questioning the preservation of the Quran. That video made me realize. Um, so we can say so, that, that uh, Muhammad Hijab, he helped you to leave Islam in this way. Because... If no, he did not, yeah. Oh, yeah. if he oh, did yeah. not ask that question, and he insists, you notice, he insists, he yeah. won the answer. Like the guy he was trying to avoid says, we should not talk about this in public. But Mimi, yeah. he insisted. So you should be thankful for Muhammad Hijab to leave Islam, not me. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that video too. Speaker's Corner, where he told everybody, you know, let's leave after uh, Hatun Tash and Dr. J were exposing them with the many different types of manuscripts of the Quran that they mm -hmm. found. Mm -hmm. The different Qurans, yeah, I saw that video too. Yeah, I saw that. I saw, man, that they do a lot of that stuff. That's not that's not surprising to me for me. <clears throat> yeah. But those were the main two reasons why I left. Um, you could also say the character and the moral um, example of Muhammad. Man, I have. I've, there's not a person in the history of the world that has been lied about more than Muhammad. I But mean, you know, Muhammad, he have a good character actually. He he is uh, very much like that, that like the part of the Caribbean. Yeah. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> uh, you're hilarious, man. That's good. Uh, by the way, somebody somebody saying that there is a Somalian Christian TV, so you need to search it so you can watch it if you like. Somebody is uh, yeah, saying yes. in the text. I've talking. seen that. I've seen that. Yes. Right. So I, I, I follow them too. Um, they, I, that that you know that really makes me smile because that shows me that you know there's there's hope you know for my people, and ultimately you know I can I can I can help people. Uh, in the future, but first, what I need to do is learn. I need to learn more about this religion so I can start exposing it myself. Um, uh, I was very, very angry when I figured out um, my whole life has been has been a lie. Very, very angry. So I'm going to direct that energy into learning and and becoming um, a weapon against Islam. Uh, hopefully for the future, because well, it's, you know, it's, it's a dangerous religion. Man. Yeah, I it's hope. a dangerous ideology. Yeah, we hope you will be able to 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 help your people first, the Somalian people, because you speak yeah. their language, you know, and you can help them better. Yes, yes. All right, my friend. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, no, not nothing else. Um, All right. Uh, I'm so happy that, for you. Thank you, thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak. You are. Um, and I'd also like to say that um, you know, hi to everybody else in the chat for helping me. Uh, I didn't know how to call in. They told me that I had to go through Skype. <laughs> well, next so, time, next time, don't next time, don't use a Skype. You know, you need to see Saint Jabril. He will squeeze me, and he will go back and squeeze you, and then we'll be connected. You know, because this is how Allah he connect with his people. He squeeze them. He squeeze them. Huh? He, op he open. No, no, I, I, will, I will knock him out like Moses. He open. He opened the line. He opened the line by squeezing. <laughs> This is, by yes, the way, I'll make sure to remember that next time. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm surprised that the Muslim they did not claim that 5G started by Jibril. <laughs> He squeezed, you know, because uh, 5G right, squeezed you. Right, yeah. squeeze All right. All right, my friend. Thank you for calling. God bless you and God bless your family. Take for care. Sure. God bless you too, man. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. All right. That's wonderful. We have a Muslim, his name is Mahdi. Okay. Hello? Allahu Akbar. 
Allahu Akbar. What does that mean? Allahu Akbar. What does that mean? God is the greatest. No, Akbar means bigger. Da, it means great or greater no. or greatest. No, here we go. The Quran. Allahu Akbar. Okay, here we go. The Quran in front of me. When Abraham, he saw the sun, he said, this is Akbar. So he called me just to say, Allahu Akbar? Okay. Yes, Allahu Akbar. So what, okay, but how, how come the, how Abraham, he worshipped the sun and he called it Akbar? There's no God except the God. Among you are not answering why, why Abraham, Abraham the Muslims, he called the sun Akbar. Is it the, the name of the God of the sun? And Allah is the name of the God of the moon? CP. Huh? Why, 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 why we try to avoid? Here we go. This is the Quran. You speak Arabic supposedly. I'm assuming. Chapter six, verse number, uh, verse number seventy-eight. It's not a hadith. It's not a hadith. فلما رأى الشمس بازغة قال هذا ربي هذا أكبر. I'm asking you. You are the one who start with Allah. Don't change topic. Why Abraham? Why, why Abraham? He called the sun Akbar. The hadith you showed in Tirmidhi about the... My friend, the don't change the topic. Don't change. We, we, we will go to the hadith. Wait, we, will go, we will go to the hadith. Wait, we will go to the hadith. Allah, Allah, Why Abraham, Allah. You, when you call me, you did not even say Allah anything. Allah you said, Akbar. No problem. Allahu Akbar. Allah is small. Allah, Allah is big. Akbar. Okay, you made me fall. Now, why Abraham, he called Allah? <laughs> why Allah, he called, he called the son Akbar? Can you tell me? I don't care. Allahu Akbar. You don't care? Muhammad okay. Is the messenger of the God. Okay, yes. guys. Allahu Akbar. He don't care. Okay, we care. We, are laughing. we are laughing at you. Secondly, yes. the hadith I showed you, it says what? But the hadith I showed you what? The what? hadith about the uh, Byzantines, then it, when the English translation says, then the following verse was revealed, does yeah. not appear in Arabic. It's not in the Arabic? Okay, let's read in Arabic. Is that okay? You are a liar. Where's the word Thumma? You are a liar. Okay, let us see. Liar. Okay, okay, we will see. Oh, okay. Don't, don't hang up, potato. Don't hang up. I want you to read in Arabic. You see the coward here? Hang up. He hang up. He didn't want to read it. He said it's not in Arabic. Potato. Potato and the coward. I mean, you, you are not even a man to read what you said to me. It's not there. قال لما كان يوم بدر ظهرت الروم على فارس فأعجب ذلك المؤمنين يا رب تيتو الله أكبر الله أكبر uh, your prophet he, saw, he said to you when you say Allah Akbar that will scare us we laugh we went to Iraq Muslims shout Allah Akbar they lost we went to Syria Muslims shout Allah Akbar they lost we went wherever we go Muslims shout Allah Akbar they lose and here we go. You shot Allah Akbar, you got busted. Allah Akbar, Allah smaller did not help you. Oh, the screen is not up, sorry. Let me put the screen. Give me a second. Here we go. An Abi Sa'id قال لما كان يوم بدر ظهرت الروم الروم على فارس فأعجب ذلك المؤمنين فنزلت. When the day of Badr, in the day of Badr, the Roman were victorious over the Persian. And if you are a man, if you are a man, I challenge you to call and to read and to say, it doesn't say that. Coward. You see, he accused me to be lying and now it's very embarrassing. We have it in the screen. Feel free to call and read. And you have no excuse, you know Arabic. Because if you don't know Arabic, how you say in Arabic doesn't say that CP. So look what happened now. You said Allahu Akbar, we got you busted in two things. Allah is the name of the moon God. Akbar is the name of the sun God. Allah Akbar is the moon sun God. They merge together. Muhammad, Muslim, they believe in Tawheed. What Tawheed? Tawheed is unifying gods. Tawheed is not oneness of God, it's unifying God. This is what Islam, religion of Tawheed. Tawheed is a word mean unification. How you can unify God if he is one? United States of America? Even the Muslim translation, they translate the word Tawheed as the unity of Allah. 
how you can make unity of Allah. Do you see it? This is your translation. Unity of Allah. If Allah is one, how you do unity of Allah? So what I will do now, I will call Akbar, I will call Allah, I will call his daughters, and we will agree to make unity. Please don't make a fight. Let us make a unity of Allah. Hang up. People are laughing at you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And don't forget to bend over, by the way, and shaitan take care of from your bum. Do you know that? Do you know that each time you say Allahu Akbar, shaitan, he fart? I mean, look at the connection between gas breaking and the name of Allah, according to your prophet. Look what you did to your prophet. You, you brought him humiliation now. Huh. Is that your prophet saying that each time you say Allahu Akbar, shaitan, he fart? Ah, I forgot, by the way, when he was saying that, you say, I said to him, you made me fart. <coughs> Read it carefully. When Satan, he hear the call of the prayer, he turned back and break wind. <laughs> I mean, how the prophet he knew that unless he is a prophet, man? That's deep. Look, this guy, he have a special sensation. He can hear and he can see the unseen, the fart of shaitan, which nobody can hear. Only the prophet can hear it. When Satan hear the call to the to prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, what shaitan do? <laughs> This is a religion, this is a prophet. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You sound like a fool. How in the world a man he claimed to be a prophet of God, he says such a stupid statement. And this is why they didn't dare to talk to me. You see, any topic they open, it will spank them. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what you talk about. This is a prophet of God. Imagine we have a Trump in TV. And there's 40, 50 million around the world, they are watching life. And then he said, Trump, he says, when Satan, he hear the call of Allah, Satan, he fought. How many people would die laughing at Trump? You are possessed by the devil Muhammad to the point you didn't see the stupidity. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What? What does that mean? And Allah is Akbar from what? Allah comparing himself to what? To mosquito? God is comparing himself because Akbar in Arabic is, you know, like in English you say, uh, big and bigger. Hmm? So Allah is bigger. Bigger from what? The answer is very simple. They used to worship idols and the idol of Allah is Akbar. which is the moon and Allah having sexual intercourse together. How, how Allah, he have three daughters? Anyone have, any, anyone thought about the question? How Allah, he have three daughters? He have sex with the moon, the, the moon God, have sex with the sun God, and they have three daughters. Did you ask yourself, the Arab, they were worshiping the daughters of Allah, where Allah got his daughters from? And the Arab always, they hated the Akbar, the sun god. Why? Because he bring uh, distortion, uh, 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 drought, uh, no rain, no water, grass die, animal die, heat. While the moon, when the moon come, the moon bring nice weather, relaxing, light, you know, not strong light. So you will see always the Arab, those who live in the desert, they worship the moon god. Those who worship, who live in Europe, who have cold, they worship the sun god. As simple as that. Two big religion was spread. Some they worship sin, the, sun, the, 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 uh, the moon god, and some they worship, which Allah, and some they worship the sun god, which is Akbar. Actually, even the Quran, if you go in the Quran, 
if you go to uh, the chapter of Yasin. Yasin. Okay, what does that mean? What the heck is that? Muhammad praising the moon God. Let's read. Ah, I forgot reading is not good for you, it's not healthy. Look at the Muslims, guys, how to explain something in the Quran. Yeah, sin. Allah knows best about what the meaning of those letters. Do you see the stupidity? So your prophet, he did not tell you what he mean by sin. He did not tell them. Why? Because he's a thief. He was stealing from the book of Waraq ibn Nufal, who is a fraud. And he was mentioning great, you know, he, he is grateful for the moon god, sin. Search right now in Google, who is sin? Sin is the moon god. Yeah, is a word mean God. Sin is the name of the God. And this word, by the way, is Aramaic. So why Allah, who is speaking to you in Arabic, as the Quran says, he say, yeah, sin, and both of them, they are not Arabic. Neither yeah is Arabic, neither sin is Arabic. So why they are there? He is quoting God's sin. Chapter 36, verse number one. And this is Tafsir al Jalalain, and this is your official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. The Muslim, they try to explain it. They say sin, different one. He says it's meaning human in the Aramaic language. Sin meaning human in Aramaic language? Potato. Read it. It says, here we go. Yeah, sin, oh, human being in the Syriac language. So they agree, first of all, that this is a Syriac language. But the mean is not correct about sin is a human. But they admit that this is a Syriac language. No, chapter 36, verse number 1. 36, verse number 1. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> and shaitan is farting. So you say Allahu Akbar, shaitan fart. Look at the connection. That means shaitan, he fart five times a day. That explains global warming. And people, they were complaining about global warming. El Gore was making lecture, forgetting that the most reason, it's not the cow, it's not the cars, it is Islam. Because it's Muslim, they say, Allah, Akbar, Shaitan, he fought. And what is fought is methanol. So global warming, uh, you know, happening because of Shaitan. A prophet, and a prophet says so. There's a video of a guy in YouTube, you can watch it. You will die laughing. He is explaining how Shaitan, he fought when he say, Allah, Akbar. When you pray and then he explained how shaitan go inside your anus and he play with it and he block it for 20 minutes 30 minutes one hour you say you go inside the bathroom you think it's going to stay there for five minutes and then you start pushing eh, eh. you watch the video i mean you would, you would die laughing and the muslim they were dying laughing and in order to shut them up he says the hadith says so the hadith so which means don't laugh this is the prophet saying that the hadith says so Which means it's, it's not him, the donkey, was saying that, that the big donkey is Muhammad. The Hadith says so. No, the Hadith says so. Don't forget, by the way, tomorrow, guys, we will be live on air in the quality of life. We have the link underneath of the video here. And if you copy of my video, please, Share the quality of life link too, so people can subscribe too. Uh, uh, let us see. Uh, here we go. This is the this is the video. I was looking for it. Satan, Islam, uh, Islam, Satan fought. I think this is my video, but uh, maybe you can find the original one. Where this is in Suko Studio. Uh, this is another one. When Satan fought. <laughs> Satan fought. Oh boy. And you know, the Muslims, actually, this is here. This, this one here, have the whole video, I think. 
this guy explained to you how shaitan fought which by the way proven to be scientifically true i mean it's obvious i mean we cannot prove you know scientists uh, from around the world they confirm those uh, things And look at this guy here, he's explaining to you breaking wind during the prayer. This is Islam. They focus on stupid things. Who is God? What God is about? No. You know, breaking winds. I mean, imagine Muslim, they pray their head facing the ass of the one before them. And then you fought. Huh. Satan fought. Let us uh, show you how Shaitan fought. Okay. Uh. Wisdom. Adza, bro. I'm going to eat three times. I'm going to go do my wudu. I'm going to go and do my rakats. I'm going to do my salat toba. I'm going to say to Allah, you know, Allah, forgive me. And then I'm going to say, you know what? Get the shaitan back again. Let me open the Quran. Let me read some Quran. Hey, man, that shaitan's probably kicking his legs on the ground by now. Yeah? Then get up and do the adhan or something. Then shaitan will, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest. Hadith of Tirmidhi says, it says, yeah? When you give the adhan, the shaitan, he not only runs, but the hadith says lahu durat. You know what durat is? What? Durat is... No way. Like, come on, are you serious? Brother, do it again, brother. What is durat? You see, my Arabic is not good. Can you teach me, please, what, what is durat? Are you, what is that? What are you doing? This is uh, what durat, shaitan, you do that? Man, that must be true. Brother, science. He not only runs, but the hadith says lahu durat. You know what durat is? No, we don't know. Durat is... Man. He runs, and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu durat. I'm not making this hadith. See, the Muslims start laughing. He says, this is not making it up. This is hadith. The Prophet says so. The Prophet says so. I'm not making it up. Don't laugh at me. I am not the joker. It's Muhammad the joker. So you, that shaitan made me do sin? Ah, oh, get up. Yeah, just get up. Just give the adhan, right? That shaitan, you're going to make him, you're going to make him leak, leak some serious gas. <laughs> you are going to make the shaitan leak serious gas. <laughs> what is the guy, Allah Akbar? My friend, oh, let me say to you, Allah Akbar again. Allah Akbar. Shaitan, he leaks serious leak, and what is it? Gas? Do you think we can fix his radiator? <laughs> what I say is stupidity is amazing. I mean it, you know? Yeah, let us skip a little bit. Uh, where he talk about you going to the bathroom. What the deen is about? See, now he is going to explain to you what Islam is about. What is the deen? Deen means religion. What the religion of Islam is about? Listen. Wow. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabais. So, oh Allah, protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. Brother, 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 carefully, brother. If you go inside the bathroom and not enter with your left foot, and what, without saying that a prayer, shaitan can see you. And what shaitan will do to you now, if he can see you, he will tell you. But if you say this prayer, shaitan, he cannot see you, brother. You have to say this prayer and you enter with the left foot, superstition religion, stupidity. So you have to enter with the left foot and you have to say a certain prayer. If you do that, shaitan, you become invisible. Do you think we can do that in a bank robbery? <laughs> they can't see us. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, 
If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tirmidhi says he plays with your bowels. Oh boy. This is what happened to Abbas every day. Because I assure you, Abbas never said that prayer before he entered the bathroom. Neither him, neither his wife, neither all his family. Abbas, I want you to be a witness. Do you feel anything when you enter the bathroom without saying this prayer that shaitan is playing with your bowels? Abbas, be honest. What, the guy who said Allahu Akbar, do you want to witness that this is true? Do you feel anything really? Shaitan, he go inside your bum, inside your anus? He will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, uh -huh. if you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tirmidhi says he plays with your bowels. Oh boy. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you think... And look, he's, like, he's explaining to you and he looked down at his bum. He played with your bowels. He played with your bowels. He played with your bowels. Not only his inside, inside where? Inside your anus. He play, he go inside your anus and he play with your bowels. Did you hear it? I mean, this is what they teach in their mosque. And then you wonder why somebody want to do suicide bombing? If people listen to this and they believe in this. So what we are talking about? He play with your bowels. Shaitan, he go inside if you don't say that prayer. Well, Muhammad, he spent 40 years of his life, wasn't a Muslim. That means Shaitan was playing with his anus for 40 years. I mean, Muhammad, you've been really screwed, literally. 40 years Shaitan playing with your anus? And Allah did not send you the prayer to say how to protect yourself? What is that prayer? Is Ali Baba up in the cave? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tirmidhi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. <laughs> you know why? Because the shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. <laughs> Told you, the hadith says to us. You see, they start laughing, going crazy. So he want to tell them, don't laugh. This is, don't be stupid. The hadith told you, the hadith says that the prophet says so. Hello? The prophet, the prophet says so. It's not me, it's the stupid. It is Allah prophet, the stupid. Look at this. I mean, how in the world this is, can be considered a religion for a second? You know what? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. <laughs> See, the hadith told you, the hadith says to us, he plays with your bowels. Seriously? Yalla abu, yalla abu, he plays with the bowels. So you say the dua, Allah protects you. Right? You come out of the toilet, gufranak, Allah forgive me. You get... Even you have to say words after you get out of that toilet. Why? You have to say forgive me. Forgive me for what? For doing poo poo? <laughs> Oh boy, stupidity again is amazing. What I can say more, literally, what I can say more. Isn't it really stupidity is amazing? How in the world anyone can believe in such a garbage, such a how we can even call it religion? You know what I mean? Okay, we have an ex-Muslim. She have questions. Let's see what she want to say. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently... Okay, well... Busy. All right. Hello? Hi, CP. How are you? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Uh, so I had a question about, is uh, uh, Muhammad really a descendant from uh, uh, from ba Bani Hashem? From Bani Hashem? I don't think so. I don't think Muhammad, you see, there is no proof that Muhammad is descendant to anyone. And I believe the reason, uh, one of the proof of that, Muhammad's family themselves, they rejected him and they sent him to a Bedouin women in the desert and nobody Can went ahead. Can you show where, like, with sources, please? Um, okay, let us see. 
Uh, let us see. I'm so happy you like uh, took my call. Oh, you're welcome. You know, but sometimes because we say Muslims only. Uh, yeah, it's so unfair. Seriously. <laughs> well, you know, we have uh, like other channel, the quality of life. And there we yeah, take, but now you uh, can't call about Islam. You're just sick and tired yeah, of Islam. Don't, yeah, first, exactly. so you don't want to talk about twenty four seven. Yeah, let us see where we can get you some uh, reference. Um, <clears throat> we will try to find something Muslims they agree with. Uh, let us see. Yeah, please, because of course Hassan and Daif is not good enough so it needs to be Sahih and even that is not good enough yeah even yeah, yeah you know so uh, uh, here we go <laughs> this is actually even even Muhammad what people do not know that Muslim they claim that Muhammad he have a plastic surgery for his breast twice oh, yeah. one once when he was a child where he was with this woman the Bedouin women in the desert uh, let me see if I can find the the if I can find if I can find the hadith in English, in English. Uh... Yeah, have you seen these little videos of you with cartoons, like where you just like uh, are sort of like a man baby and you're lying? Have yeah. you seen those series? I'm not sure. Uh, like, um, it's, um, and when you investigate, you see that they're lying again. These uh, apologists are so sad, of Islamic apologists. Seriously. Yeah, well, eh, they are kids. It's okay. They help us at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't. They do the opposite. You know, people when they find out that. Yeah, they is... lie and then they gaslight it on you. Like it, yeah. they lie exactly. The, the it's their lie, but then they gaslight it on you. Yeah. Uh, let us see. So I'm really interested to sh to prove that Bani Hashem he's not a, because they say well he was a very respected, uh, like rich um, man who uh, was like all known all over the place and I remembered you saying that nobody even knew him and also giving Khadija as an example as in like even after she married two times and had so many children his uh, her father was not uh, like willing to give her away to exactly. a good-looking younger man yeah, because, that's insane because be because because you know you. yeah because an, an, a man who his daughter she is married to many husbands before she have tons of kids and nobody will really marry her. I mean, even now, if you are a woman and married and yeah, you have exactly. many kids, you will have difficulty to find a man who will marry you. So why her, her family, they reject Muhammad if he is from a great family? Uh, but Let the, me tell you why. Yeah. Because yeah. he like she, he was such a good person, Muhammad. He just wanted to be with someone who he loved. He didn't care about the dogma of the day. And he married someone who was even married two times and had so so many children. Yeah. He's such a great man. <laughs> I'm mean, like the things that they say about. I mean, the guy was obviously a pedophile, right? Because after that, right away, he just like from an eight, 15 years older to like six or something. It's just insane that he's that he like is like an obvious pedophile. And yet, when you give an example of like, look, he married Khadija only for power, and she was like this and this woman. It's like no, astaghfirullah. Yeah. Uh... You see here the hadith here i found one in english the, the rest are in arabic and this is the problem most of the islamic reference which one is this because i'm on the phone i can't this see is the sah this is sahih this is sahih muslim right I, I will post the link in the oh actually my screen is not on sorry uh, this is the uh, this is sahih muslim hadith number 162c and here you see the story supposedly uh, uh, this is a proof that muhammad he was suffering from epilepsy you know, he fell down in the ground. They thought he is dead. And mashallah, mashallah. He had everything. Yeah, he had everything in him. Yeah, but uh, but here the Muslim they claim that the angels they come to him and they cut his chest. And this is you will see that this story repeated twice. Once when he was in Mac in in in, in uh, like angels as a grown man. Angels cut his ca ca chest. Angels or demons? No, the, according to the story, angels. Angel Jibril, Doctor Jibril. Uh. Yeah, Dr. Jibri is very well known as a surgeon. He he do surgery too. The, uh, so Muhammad, he have a problem with his breast. So Jibril, he did cut his chest and he extended his breast. <laughs> and actually, there's a verse about it in the Quran. It says Sharah you know? Sadrak. Yeah. So, and this is story repeated twice. And here the question to the Muslim is why Allah he did the same surgery twice? Why the first one was a failure? Why Allah he made the same surgery to him when he was a kid? And then 
uh, he made the same surgery when he is a man. Um, but is this somehow proved that he was not from the Bani Hashem? I don't think so, right? It's not related well, I mean, to my uh, to, to prove it, you have to go analyze information. It doesn't come like, uh, uh -huh. there's nowhere it says, no, he is not, you know. But there's like, Hadith says he is the same as a palm tree, which nobody knows where, how it came. Like, a palm tree appears suddenly in the desert. But you will notice that there is like a Hadith about uh -huh. people who came to claim that Muhammad is their son. You know, they claim literally that Muhammad is, is their son. Uh, the family of Muhammad, all of them, they rejected him. They sent him to a woman. She had nothing to do with him in the desert. No, okay, let me ask it, frame the question differently. Is there proof, is there hard proof that he was like the descendant of the Bani Hashem according to the Quran or the Hadith Sira or Sunnah? No, nowhere in the Quran is speaking about that. You know, the Quran mentioned the name of Muhammad. I mean, and don't know then about the no, Bani no, nowhere. nowhere. It's, and this is where. And that, and that is, this is what. To, of course, Ishmael. This is what make it funny. How come the Quran mention that this is the son of this and this is the son of that, and then when it's come to Muhammad, it says nothing about him. Who is his father? Where he is even born? Abdullah was his father, right? Yeah, but the Quran name and he never. Was dead no, four Abdu years Abdullah. He was born. Ab Abdullah is not his father. Abdullah is an Arabic word used for anyone who is unknown, slave of Allah. So if something happened. And you saw somebody, a man doing something. Let us say you are in the street, and they ask you what his name. You say Abdullah, which means anyone, slave of Allah. I don't know, you know. So slave of Allah, the name of the father of Muhammad, proving two things. It cannot be the name of Muhammad's father because Muhammad's father will go to hell. So how he is a slave of Allah yet he will go to hell. Number two, all the 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 sons of uh, of uh, the grandfather of Muhammad. They have uh, uh, names of uh, the idols of Quraysh. Muslim, they claim that the family of Muhammad, they are not they are like the grandfather, he was a Hanif, but this is a lie. All of us, we knew that from his children, Abdul Uzza, Abdul Manaf, Abdul Manat, etc., all the names, they are the slaves of the idols around the Kaaba. So, if you say that Muhammad's father, his name is Abdullah, that means Abdullah was one of the idols, or Allah was one of the idols around the Kaaba too. Or you have to explain to me how Allah became with those. And where, what is the proof that Abdullah really was the father of Muhammad? There's no proof. Even their book says that Abdullah and his father, they have sexual intercourse with two women in the same time. Same time. So then how, what? yeah. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be marriage, so which means the same night, like they get married together in the same night, but it's like you know, uh, Arab marriage. So, how then uh, Muhammad he is born four years after his father's death if his father yeah, is Abdullah? You know, like that just defies like the world how it works, but then the ones who are this farly, this deeply hip hypnotized with this thing, they will say, So what? So what? Don't you believe in miracles? Those are miracles. No, actually, actually, the Muslims believe that a Muslim woman, she can carry a child from a husband up to 10 years. Uh, let us see, uh, let us see uh, if I can find you the reference. We showed it before. And all of this is to, just to cover how Muhammad's story happened. Uh, let us see. We can use Google Translation uh, to, to show what Muslims believe. And you will see how hilarious it is. Okay, let's open this page here. Okay, this is. I, so I, will, I will put it in the. I will put it in the screen so everybody can see. This is Islam, uh, Sual and Jawab, run by Sheikh Saleh Al Munjid, very well known, famous Sheikh from Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. uh, it says here the title: What is the longest period for women she to be a bright net, uh, you know, to carry a child? Translation from Arabic to English. Let us see. And then you will see the hilarious oh, answer. Sir. Yeah. The longest period of women to be pregnant. You see it? So here, if you go down and read the, the answer, you will see the following. First, second, who you have to give you the opinion because Muslims, they have many sects. So, uh, depend in the sect, but all of them, they agree together that women, she can really, the normal thing is like nine months. Uh, then two years, then three years. Look here, two years in the doctrine of the of the of the tap, 
this translation, which is not really good translation. Uh, uh, one year according to uh, etc. Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hakam. Then he says three years, which is saying of Layth ibn Sa'd. And then four years, which is the doctrine of uh, Sufi. <laughs> Mimi Hijab is a Sufi, by the way. So according to Mumi Hijab, his wife, she can deliver a child four years after he divorced her. He's a Sufi. No? And the Hanbali, and the Hanbali too, they have the same, you know. And the, and the Maliki, this is the Islamic sect are five, uh, four. And those are three of them. They agree with the four years and they can go more. Here it says, five years, according to Imam Malik, the Maliki sect, they believe woman, she can have a child uh, five years up, after five years after the divorce or her, her husband pass away. Six years, according to Azuri and Malik. And then he says, seven years, according to Saad uh, uh, Rabia. Uh, and then uh, it says, and this is the same version of Azuri and Malik. And then it says, and they really believe this. I thought they yeah. thought it was and miracles. No they limit. believe that this could actually bi biologically come to be. Well, this like, is what they, this, this is the religion. That's it. You cannot deny, you cannot de debate it. Uh, this is what they believe. And then even they, some of them, they say there's no limit, which means a woman, her husband maybe died 40 years ago, after four years ago, after, you know, her, she delivered a child, if this is possible physically, and she will claim that this is from her son. Actually, there's a woman in Somalia. They were going to practice Sharia law on her. And then the lawyer, he told them, he showed them the reference that a woman, so what? Because they took her to court because two years after her husband passed away, she delivered a child. So obviously she is doing illegal relation, you know? So they took her yeah. to the court and then the, the lawyer, he saw, showed them that according to Islam, a woman, she can deliver after seven years. There's no proof that well, she is going to use a purpose then, yeah. you know, so, if you define so he like, saved her. He the said, laws he, of nature, you yeah, can maybe he, use it in court. Yeah, that's your yeah. purpose. So you can he, maybe abuse it. <laughs> so he saved her from being stoned to death because Islam teach women she can be even don't limit. There's no limit in some in some uh, opinion. There's no limit for women. She can, you know, wow. yeah, there's she no limit. She could be uh, pregnant for a hundred years. Yeah. Well, subhanallah, subhanallah. Subhanallah. <laughs> All right, my dear sister. Yeah, I learned a I, lot. Okay, thank you so much. I have a million questions, but you have uh, other stuff to answer. But thank you so much for answering uh, yeah, my question. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. Yeah, actually, I, I got to go soon. Uh, my room here is getting so hot, and I'm not putting the fan on me, so the fan will not hit the microphone, but I'm literally sweating. Uh, you know, I'm burning, very hot. Uh, we don't have the luxury. Anyway, so uh, as you see, guys, when we challenge Muslims to show us something real about the religion, there's nothing. It's an empty cult, stupid cult. Shaitan farting, shaitan take care from your anus. I mean, imagine what kind of a prophet he says, shaitan, he take care from your anus when you pray. I mean, what is that? Based on this, Abbas, he have no hair in his anus. Abbas, take a selfie for us. <laughs> if Shaitan, he take hair from Abbas each time he pray, either Abbas, he is not praying, and that means he's a kafir, or Abbas is a praying and should have no hair there. No hair. Because Abbas, not only he pull it, he put his foot in his bum, in the bum of the believer, and he pull it out, and he will not stop until he make you fart, and he hear it and he smell it. This is what the prophet said. Prophet of farting. Peace upon him. I mean, Muhammad, he have a specialty. You can tell his specialty is about farting. He have a lot of a specialty. A lot of skills, we have to admit. If Muhammad was exist today, we will open the university of farting and hair taken from the, your anus. I mean, this shaitan is really evil. Why he's doing this to the Muslims? And those things happen only to the Muslims. We Christians, shaitan, don't take her from our, you know? So I say to Muslims, save yourself, my friend. Save your ass. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget to download the video. It's going to take maybe 30 minutes before YouTube process it. Download it immediately after that. And in order always to go, to be updated, like you might say, okay, where is the video? It's gone. The video you made yesterday. 
subscribe to the channels there's many channels they have a huge subscribers even some of them maybe more than me you can subscribe to their channels for the download my videos always this way you support them in the same time you get the videos and uh, don't forget tomorrow we will be in the quality of life we will be live and all Christians are welcome to call uh, the quality of life is an account where we use it only to speak about topic have nothing to do with the garbage of Muhammad no Islam there period so the link is down in the info click in it open it subscribe to the other channel and join us tomorrow and we have a special topic there to talk about there we speak about something real something useful something benefit something benefit you and your family and your children and your marriage and your, whatever you have in your life you know not stupid stuff like Muhammad speaking here so I understand many of you here they are coming because they want to laugh at the stupidity of Islam but remember Islam is a very dangerous cult and because of Islam you are spending billions of dollars in tax today from your pocket to secure yourself against the terrorism of Islam which means Muhammad you like it or not is impacting your life and your security just last week two attacks in England of terrorists shouting Allahu Akbar and they killed more than six or seven people already and that will never stop the easiest way to fight terrorism is to do what I am doing a terrorist will not be terrorist if we explain to him that Muhammad is a fraud but he will be a terrorist if he still believe in the fraud of Muhammad like the guy who called me Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar he have all nothing to say I'm sure if he have a knife he will hold his knife and he will chop me and he will say Allahu Akbar but it's too late I have tens of thousands of videos I have books all over translated to many languages I live I die doesn't matter your prophet get busted and he been spanked and my fingers all over his body deal with it all right so I want to say thank you all for uh, being here and we appreciate those who support us too if you like to support us uh, those who ask like I receive a message saying how we can uh, I did not answer you right away because I was busy for the one who asked me to you know to help us in donation you can go to patreon as you see in the screen and uh, there you can you know make uh, uh, like uh, subscribe for maybe even a dollar a month you don't have to make it a big uh, little with many can help you know if uh, 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 because some people they say they're like uh, it's like a subscription which means every month will take from your uh, from your you know you can stop at any time number one and you can make it limited as you wish you know like a dollar two dollars three dollars anyway this is not really uh, uh, what uh, what is important important is uh, if you really like to support us is downloading the videos and translating my videos to other languages way more important than donation yes we need donation but translating my work to other languages is helping millions of people it's very important you do not know you have no idea how much you are being helpful to Christian Prince by translating for when you help me, you are helping the truth. I appreciate all those people who translated my books to many languages, and all of them, they did not get a penny for free. Very beautiful people, very amazing people. And now we have our books translated even to Indonesian. We have to Spanish, we have to Portuguese. We have, uh, 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 soon I will, uh, we will publish my book in Malay language, and soon we will be in the Russian language. And soon will be in the Albanian language. Just wait, we have a series of books will be launched, and all will be those books we are talking about, like the uh, uh, the books, especially for countries where they are poor. Poor countries, I will not charge people for the books because I know they are poor. They cannot afford it, not because I'm rich or I have money, but because they are poor for me uh, the lord will provide and always he provide doesn't matter how he will provide he never fail us he never left us alone so i will release a couple of books i'm just busy right now with many things uh, and they will be for free in many languages for the poor around the world so they can get and read and learn 
the truth about the garbage of Islam and the cult of Muhammad. And we pray that more people, they will help us to volunteer to translate so we can expose this cult. Like I wish we can get somebody translate to Chinese, Korean, you know, um, other languages. There's many languages we don't, we never heard of, right? So, um, language is very important. Me, myself, I don't speak English right now. With my funny English, I was able to do a lot of work serving the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. But if you don't have language, then how you can communicate, how people will know. And by Muslims translating their stories into the languages of others, fabricating the translation, that is not helping either because it's a fabricated translation. So translation information is shared by us is very important and as you see we show the muslims the hadith says that the 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 revelation about the verse of the roman revealed after the victory of the romans still they don't accept it i mean we are showing even their own translation right so uh well you do not need customs these days my friend and no indonesian are poor the major the major population are poor people Maybe there's some people in Indonesia, they are uh, uh, wealthy. This is happening everywhere. But the major population of Indonesia, they are poor people. You know, there's a lot of poor ladies work in Saudi Arabia as maid. Number one source for maid in Saudi Arabia is Indonesia. And people will not do such a job, go into Saudi Arabia and get raped and killed unless they are very poor and desperate for a job. So don't tell me they are not poor. They are poor. And nothing wrong with being poor, by the way. Don't think when I say poor is an insult. The Lord, he says, bless those the poor. God, he blessed the poor. The poor are more close to heaven. What's wrong with being poor? So don't think when I say poor, I mean something bad. It is for the... Uh, being poor, always poor people are more loving people. You go to a poor person house, he opens his house for you. He will serve you anything he has. You go to someone who is rich. He don't open the door. What do you want? Who are you? He's scared, terrified. What do you want? For sure, not all the rich people are the same, right? I'm not saying all the people are the same. But it's reality. You go to, you know, I went like to many countries around the world. They don't even have a door in their house. They see somebody is a foreign person, they will come him, will come get in, you know, I mean, they have nothing actually, Those, they are really, they have nothing, they have nothing even to sit on. If you see how they welcome you, you will not believe it. You go to somebody rich, he have a villa, he have security cameras, you knock the door, what do you want? Why you are here? They investigate you, nobody opened the door for you. So nothing wrong with being poor. Poor actually, you know, when, when people get rich, usually not all people as I said they get spoiled richness damaged them they became away from God away from reality away from uh, uh, that we are going we are not going to take anything with us so they became so much attached to that Jesus said in the Bible that the the heart of the man is where his treasure is where is your treasure if the treasure is money this is where your heart is if your treasure is God, it's with God. The poor guy, he don't have a treasure of money. He have his heart. He have his welcoming, he have his smile. And even with his little treasure, which is nothing, maybe a piece of bread, still he will share it with you and he will be happy to do so. Right? So, uh, it's very important to help the poor for the poor, they deserve our help. And the Lord himself, he was not walking between uh, noble people. You know, the, the one who was the disciple of Jesus, they are fishermen. Paul, he used to make tents. You know, he quit what he was doing and he became a tent maker. Fishermen, people do farming. Those are the disciples of Jesus. They are not from noble 
or first class uh, society. They are normal people, poor people, and they give everything they have for the sake of the Lord. So I want to say thank you for all for being here. And remember always, people, they throw rocks at you for you have fruits in your tree. So when they call you liar, etc., they cannot yet prove it, but they will call you the names for simply they are upset from the fruits you have in your tree. So I pray the Lord will bless your fruits, bless your family, and give you more glory to you and your family, keep you in health and wealth. Thank you. God bless. And again, I will delete the videos maybe in a few hours from now, maybe by the end of the night. And until then, until tomorrow, in the quality of life, we will be there. Until then, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.